Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah. Why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Yeah. Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. It's how they run, homie. Look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Oh, my God. So, okay, you, you missed it. You were like, <sighs> you know, 50 seconds off uh, of Tom giving some inappropriate jokes. Hilarious. But we're not going to repeat it. No, we have we're not to. We're just going to get into it. Tom, you want to. Nah. No, no, no. No, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. As I was saying about the economy, what happened is with the interest yeah, rates. Okay, the all right. Well, listen, home team oh, is here. you're going to pick on me, so Home team, that home was team, him. home that team. Was what it. did I say? I said about what? The the economy? No, no. no. He, had, he had a nice joke. He said that... Uh, Inappropriate for a podcast, but it's fun if it's uh, not on. The but podcast. it's great to be here today. It's great it to be so here good. today. Yeah. We got uh, Adam, Vinny, uh, Bizdoc in the house. Uh, we we may, by the way, we may uh, introduce the link to the tickets to the first live we were mm. at the event yesterday. Can I be at the live? Do I have to buy tickets? Or first can I just of all, be there? you you got to buy two tickets. But yesterday what? we were at the <laughs> for the voice in my head. For the voice in my head. Yes. Yeah, actually, okay. that's really yes. Down. How hey, did you know? We got a lot of things to talk about. So if you if you can see this here. McCarthy goes to the White House, and they increase the rates by only a quarter. I know that you 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 like that. I love it's that. Oh, base. I, I really want increasing in money. If there's everybody is wondering what Vinny's take is on Fed approves quarter point rate hike. It's coming. Uh, we want to hear mm -hmm. about it. We got a bunch of different stories we got to get into. How many how, what, how many uh, live viewers do we need to get to in order to make this announcement today? Let's give the, the, our friends a challenge. I, I think that's. I think that we can make the announcement at six thousand. We get to okay. six thousand. We'll make six thousand guys. Okay. Don't let us down. There's no uh, so, announcement. So here's on, what we got. Here's Good what morning, we got. America. We got uh, the, Ron it. DeSantis. Ron DeSantis for the first time they say took a shot yeah, at Trump. Right now we'll we'll see if that qualifies as a shot or not. Nikki Haley is apparently uh, announcing a run for president, and she apparently called Donald Trump. We'll talk about that. ChatGBT, there's a few different things going on there that teachers rejoice. ChatGBT creators have released a tool to help detect AI-generated writing for teachers, and they're fired up about it. Elon Musk pushes uh, forward with Twitter payment vision. He's got a few things going on. Fed approves the rate hikes. We'll talk about that. The biggest risk to market is no recession at all in 2023. J.P. Morgan strategists say. That's a uh, insider story. Uh, some say we may be facing the depression-like of a recession that's going to be coming. Not a good uh, look. And by the way, that article, I don't know who it's from. It's uh, uh, depression. Fox Business, we'll talk about that. Home prices fell in November for fifth straight month. Uh, how much tip should you leave? This is a, a story that Adam's very committed to. Uh, as a guy who doesn't like to leave tips, we're going to get Hello, his feedback from other like, people <laughs> on, on tips. Some fake news. Fake news. Tw Twitter, Twitter, Twitter lashes out at Bill Maher following new CNN segment announcement. Tom Brady announces retirement. Hunter Biden threatened to withhold assistance pay for sex. Who would believe a story like that? <laughs> no who would believe way. a story like that? With Class them? act. But we're going to dive into it. There's you got some stuff with Alec story. Baldwin. 100%. And then Adam's got some feedback on Tyree Nichols. First person uh, had... Has the first person uh, been born to live to 150 years old, which is kind of interesting. Maybe that person's in this room. We don't know. Maybe. And last but not least, the collapse of faith in America. We know you got strong opinions about that. So having said that, Appreciate I say we get right into economy, Tom, and talk about the rate hikes, if you guys are okay with that. Let me see here. Okay. Fed approves quarter point rate hike signals more increases likely this is a Wall Street Journal story, page 8, if you want to go to it. You know, it would be interesting if we can get the audience to follow with us, if we actually gave PDFs I was to people say, well, who are members. awesome. If we can do something where members can get PDFs and they can just print it out and follow the story with us. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're interested in that, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Maybe we'll do it on the next episode. I okay. got it. PBDs, PDFs, it's a, it's a, it's like, it's a duet like wow. no other. Tom and I couldn't even match Phenomenal that Phenomenal what you just said right there. Okay. That's what we're doing. Federal approves quarter rate hikes. Uh, signals more increases likely. The Federal Reserve approved an interest rate uh, increase of a quarter of a percentage point. And Signal plans to raise again next month to continue lowering inflation. The decision Wednesday following six consecutive uh, rate rises that were larger, including an increase of a half a point in December and uh, three-quarters of a point in November. The committee anticipates that ongoing increases in interest rates will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficient, sufficiently restrictive. The latest increase caps a year in which the Fed lifted its benchmark federal funds rate from a near zero to a range of four and a half to four uh, and three-quarters. 
a level last reached in 2007. We can now say for the first time that this inflationary process has started. The federal chair, Jerome Powell, said the job is not fully done. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? Well, remember, um, Jay Powell has said that until inflation is at what percent, or I can see it, or I can see it from here, um, see the whites of their eyes, I'm going to keep raising rates. So he said the disinflationary process has started. What he means by that is he's starting to see the peak and flatten and like momentum start to come down. But he says he's still going to be raising rates. What this means to people listening is that All those headlines you see about tech layoffs, it's not just going to be tech. There's going to be more layoffs in other sectors because this is going to slow the economy, slow down consumer spending. We've already talked on past podcasts about Christmas spending and things that were down. And so this is just a sign that the worst is over, but he's still going to be putting these quarter point rates there. Um, Mortgages right now are still seven. If you don't have perfect credit, seven and a half, even eight, if you have horrible credit. And if you have horrible credit, and why are you buying a house right now? Because it is going to be for you. Everybody else, it's uh, six and three quarters, seven. So this is going to keep slowing down the economy. But he says the job is not fully done. More is coming. Okay. so, So you say that. But then I read a story here, Tom, from Insider that says the biggest risk to the market is no recession at all in 2023. JP Morgan strategists say, this is an Insider story Mm -hmm. as well, and this is on page eight. Uh, It says the biggest threat to markets right now is as if recession recession doesn't materialize, forcing the Federal Reserve to remain hawkish, JP Morgan strategist Mike Bell said. The S&P 500 or NASDAQ composite are nearly up 6 and 11% the past month, respectively, as Wall Street sees the Fed reversing its tightening campaign in response to an economic downturn. But if the U.S. economy avoids a recession and wage growth remains high, then the Fed would not cut rates as expected and instead would have to resume rate hikes in their second half of the year, lifting them higher than Wall Street currently anticipates. Bell said, unfortunately, at that point, you're back into a world where both bonds and stocks would go down together, he said. But J.P. Morgan's best case assumes there will be a recession in 2023 that will allow wage pressures to moderate and feds to cut rate in 2024. Does that make sense to you? It does make sense. And what it means is this. Can I just paint a different picture? I'll Please. do a biz paint case away. study. I'll paint a different picture. But I'm paint- okay. The economy is the cheerleader. Okay. Okay. What does she look like? Uh, she hot? She's upstairs in her bedroom, okay. and Jerome Powell's in there Ew. with the cheerleader. Okay. Yeah. And I like until this. the economy... This is an analogy, folks. And this until is just a metaphor. The economy, Shit. We're being analogous. Right. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> and until the economy starts cooling down, which would be your parents' headlights coming into the driveway, he's not leaving the bedroom and running out the back door. Wow. That is what's happening. So the economy is going to keep getting pounded by these interest rates. <laughs> <laughs> And Tom. <laughs> Tom, please continue to tell me how Jerome Powell's up in the bedroom pounding the economy. I got to know. Running out the back door. That's exactly. But that's the way to look at this. And so what JP Morgan is saying is unless we have a recession, which is a little bit of pain and shift in the economy, yeah. Powell's not going to move the interest rate. So in other words, until we have the pain of recession and some unemployment, which is terrible part of the pain but it's part of it and we have you know price starts to come down price coming down on eggs would be a nice thing um especially for the egg master thank you Mm -hmm. the Um, egg master but until that happens and so I'll, i'll use a more i'll use a nicer a nicer approach you know if you you're out there snowboarding and you tear up your knee Stretching that knee after the surgery, if anybody's yeah. ever had a, a knee injury, is horrible. You go to the doctor and it's horribly painful. Stretching the knee is what has to happen for our economy. And there is going to be some unemployment. There is going to be prices <clears throat> come down. And it's going to be tough. And if that doesn't happen, J.P. Morgan's saying, if we don't get a little bit of pain and that doesn't happen, then he's going to keep raising rates in which – they went into a technical terminology, which means bonds and stocks both end up in a bad place, and the economy doesn't have a chance to kind of cool off. Okay, well, so Pat, so he, I mean, Tom, so he's up there, a lot of pain, a lot of pounding. <laughs> Is there any way he could stimulate, like, the economy with some, I don't know, like, Viagra? You know what I mean? What, what some ca- stimulus. Well, 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 but like here's this. a challenge. To, to continue with the analogy that you're taking yeah. and the pounding that Tom took, <laughs> to go with that analogy, here's what you have to be thinking about. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. honestly, imagine right. straight up if you're on Viagra yes. for 10 and a half years straight every single day, you're just taking Viagra. Yeah. 
That's what happened to the economy. Oh, when we shit. had 128 month economic see expansion. See how we did that? So th- that's the that's mm. the challenge of what's going on today. We've been on Cialis, Cialis, or I'm, freaking oh. all these guys nonstop, and now the economy's like, dude, I, I, g- I got to take a break. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I got to take a break. <laughs> By the way, shout out to our sponsor right now. If you're dealing with <laughs> after erectile hours, dysfunction, after you can't hours, get it up. Go see a doctor. You want, so we have to go see a doctor. Let now. me tell you, yeah, against right. my wife's wishes, I've had two Yetis full of coffee today, <laughs> and that's probably the issue. <laughs> that's um, so funny. Yeah. So my my warning to you all. No, think about also think about it this way, Vinny. Once the economy shifts and mm-hmm. the prices of things come down, even though there's some unemployment, what do the people that have jobs start doing? They start buying incremental things again, maybe traveling a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And so what that means is GDP goes back up because people start spending naturally and prices have come down a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's the whole circle of life they're trying gotcha. to manipulate here. But is there going to be uh, like a moment? Do you guys think, Pat do, uh, and, and Tom, do you guys think, you two Adam, is there going to be like a moment where it's like, all right, guys, this shit at the fan we're, like, is there an announcement when you hit like a real deal recession, like when no, it's really it, bad? It, it, it tends to be a slow drip, 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 and drip, then just, drip. Like in 2008, when I when I experienced my first like yeah, like okay. taste of the nightlife, yeah, was it was markets down 500 today, markets down 800 today. We're talking about the Dow typically. Yeah, markets down 900. Boom, we're down a thousand, and then it's like next thing you know, we're down 40 percent or whatever the number was. Yeah. slow drip, 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 drip. You you were already just starting. You think I think you had just started PHP right after that. I want to say so that was so. There's no actual moment. It's just everybody yeah. looks around and goes, "It's we're inside well, of it right here, now." Can, can I can I give a little yeah, please. So number one, shout out to who I think is the most important figure in, in America today. Uh, it's his birthday this weekend, and uh, I'm not talking about me. We share the same birthday. I'm talking about Jerome Powell, February fourth. Pull him up, Rob, just so I can fact check this thing. Let's take a look at this good-looking guy. I already guy. sent it to Rob, but now yeah, he's doing the work. I don't let's know see why the guy I'm with the cheerleader. Look at Boom, that look at that. February 4th. Shout out to him. But the, the Wait, Fed, 53? So this is a zero birthday for him, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is uh, it's going to be 70. Shout out to my to my dad, hey, Jerome Powell. But I just want to give you some, some quick numbers real quick, just so you can kind of wrap your head around the numbers, because I think Pat teed up uh, exactly what we should be discussing is that these prognosticators who are pre- there's a recession in 2023 no way it's going to be 2024 what's biden going to do no way biden's going to enter a 2024 election if there's a recession he's going to stimulate the economy whatever it is here's just some numbers for you inflation for the year i know it was up as high as eight percent overall was 6.5 percent year over year last year i think they want to keep it somewhere around two to three percent so it's almost double where we'd like it to be mm-hmm. in the united states Unemployment somehow is still 3.5%. I know that you think that's going to increase dramatically over the next few years. We'll see. The last time it was 3.5% was under the Trump administration, I want to say somewhere in the 2018 range, where he was bragging about, hey, this is you know lowest unemployment, lowest uh, blacks, Asians, whites. It was, it was obviously a, a great time for the economy at that point. But here's where I want to go to. This, we've talked about this a few times, this fear-greed index. Uh, CNN does a good job about this, Rob. I don't know if you want to just pull that up. The fear and greed index, one month, so it's zero to 100. 100 is like full on greed. Zero is like shockingly fearful. Um, right now, one month ago, one year ago, we were at 28. 28, just to put it in perspective. That's when crypto started falling. Yeah. Absolute fear, <laughs> extreme fear mode. A month ago, it was 38, which was essentially fear mode, essentially way less than neutral. Now, today, we're at 68, which is like trending towards extreme uh, greed. So I don't know what's happening in the economy over the last month, but some of these numbers, inflation going down, employment being strong, I don't know. I can't make sense of it. It's like, is the economy... In shambles, are we doing better than ever? Are people greedy? Are people fearful? I think to answer your question, I think there's a famous saying like, trying to predict the stock market is the equivalent of trying to figure out a drunk stumbling man figuring out his way home. Like, yeah. He's just going to, it's <laughs> yeah. that whole deal. So, you know, you always hear these prognosticators um, who continually get it wrong. What do they say? Like a monkey throwing darts has a better chance of predicting where the economy goes. Last point, I wish what they did, like you ever watch a, uh, you know, Fox NFL or, you know, CBS NFL, they show, or ESPN, they show the, whether it's Stephen A. Smith or Booger Smith or whatever these guys' names are, Chris Berman, all these guys, they show their record for their year against predictions. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris Berman was uh, 48 and 72 this year. It's like, turns out he don't know shit. Yeah. Okay, I wish (laughs) they did that for people in the the financial world. Keep your stats. Great idea. That's freaking, We'll see what happens. 
Well, if you take a look here, and by the way, thanks for bringing this up, Adam. This is really. Hey, any time, Tom. No, no, no. <laughs> I love Good it. heavens. No, I meant that sincerely. Well, I, this so is a I. good Adam is talking about a good index to take a look at. And it talks about the emotion driving the market. It's not necessarily consumers Correct. Correct. out there, you and me. It is the emotion driving the market. What has been happening right now? We've had a lot of layoffs. The market likes layoffs because it means a company is going to be cutting its costs and in the short time the stock is going to pop a little bit. So guess what? Greed. Hey, I can go get a little bit of a pop off that stock because Facebook you know, laid off people, had a pretty reasonable quarter, and they're buying back shares. Hey, I got a little pop I can get out of this. That is a greed index. This doesn't necessarily relate to consumers, but right now, with all the layoffs and things that have happened, the market is in a, uh, a little pop cycle where people are investing in it. These are sophisticated traders uh, and taking advantage of the pops that have come from the, the layoffs and the few companies that had reasonable quarters. Well, let me read this one then, because this kind of goes into uh, 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 past the story of greed. GDP reveals uh, ominous Great Depression warning sign not seen since 1932. Okay, A GDP report is saying that a Great Depression warning sign not seen since 1932. Here's what it is. Even the areas that what uh, which contributed to... Uh, uh, positively to GDP are not necessarily signs of prosperity. For example, business investment grew at only 1.4% in the fourth quarter, but that was almost entirely inventory growth. Non-residential investment, a key driver of future economic growth, was only up 0.7%. Meanwhile, residential investment fell off a cliff, dropping 26.7% as consumers were unable to afford the combination of high uh, home prices, high interest rates, and falling real incomes. But perhaps most troubling is the pre uh, precipitous drop in real disposable income, which fell over $1 trillion in 2022. For context, this is the second largest percentage drop in real disposable income ever behind only 1932, the worst year of the Great Depression. To keep up with inflation, consumers are now depleting their savings and burning through the stimulus checks they received during 2020 and 2021. That is the one thing that uh, I don't think enough people are talking about. You can look at everything that's good, and you can say, well, look at what's going on here, look at what's going on there. But when people run out of savings, something happens to them. And gradually, our savings has gone from $2.1 trillion, down a trillion Jeez. in savings to $1.1, $1.2 trillion. That's like you have $20,000, now you got $10,000. It's not crazy yet, but you're thinking about of it, course. okay? And for for those who were kind of sitting there being greedy and say, well, you know, let me tell you, here's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm not going to sell this for this price. Sales are coming in the next two quarters. Mm -hmm. Sales are coming in the next two quarters. And the credit card balances, I mean, you tweeted it out. And Record, you also 940 billion, about yeah. 940 billion. We were talking about it. You and I sat down before the Clay and the Buck uh, show that we had. Clay Travis, those guys do a great job. But, you know, the the uh, and by the way, do you remember, I don't know if you remember this, maybe you will. When we were doing podcasts and you said, Pat, I, I'm all about save that money. Look what's happened ever since we give the stimulus checks. People are paying off the credit card debt. Americans are saving 27%, record-breaking. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, this was a month. This is so so. Biden's inauguration is one, January 2021. January 20, yeah. mm -hmm. March, they announced the $1.9 trillion. Mm -hmm. In April, the savings rate in America hits 27%. When is the last time we saved 27%? 27%. You know what the savings rate is right now? 2.4%. Holy mm -hmm. shit. But by the way, lowest it's been in 17 years. Lowest it's been in 17 years. So you know what 17 is? 17 is not even 2008 crash. 17 mm -hmm. is prior to that. So these are things that will be felt. You know, somebody the other day on, um, who posted this on, uh, oh, uh, can you go to Pro Professor Scott Galloway? Go to Professor Scott Galloway's Twitter account. He posted this yesterday. And if you guys know who he is. Yeah, he's Prof. a beast. He's a beast. He's a, uh, he, he's a beast, but he also uh, 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 is, no, go to his, Okay, uh, it's going to be one of his recent tweets where he talks about the economy is not as bad as people are saying. Uh, man, I hope you can go to it. If you can't go to it, I'm going to read it. My, there it is right there. Click on that one. That's the one. Zoom in a little bit. Real GDP is up 6.7% under Biden. We gained 4.5 million jobs in 2022. Inflation over the last six months 
uh, uh, is down 2% at an annual rate. Economy is doing better than most Americans think. Okay. Now go to the comments. Go to the comments. Go to the comments. Go to the comments. Zoom in a little bit. Todd Mitchin. Tell that to almost a $4 gas, $9 eggs, $8 milk, out gas, and electric bill that went up two-thirds and the countless increases of massive amounts while literally tens of thousands of people are being laid off at a record pace. I like you, but your comments are wrong. Okay, keep going lower. Keep going lower. So what, what he's saying is he's not feeling it. The other person is saying the average day-to-day person that's shopping, they're feeling it. Here's, here's one thing that happens uh, uh, when you make money. Uh, the moment you make money, it, it, certain things change, meaning a $3 increase isn't felt. Mm-hmm. You know, a, you know, gas prices goes up $2, you won't feel it. You're like, ah, gas, I was filling up my tank at 80 bucks, and that's 110 bucks. Okay, who cares? Just 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, you know, this thing that we were paying this much money for, shopping's gone up every month, $200. It's not a big deal. It's $200. Two-person making money is not a big deal. Of course. Two-person that's making $55,000 a year or is making $82,000 trying to take care of their husband, wife, and three kids, mm-hmm. yeah, they're going to feel it. So... Uh, uh, the real pain is felt by the people and their savings is down, their confidence is down. Um, you feel it when you talk to them. They're, so. out of, they're out of touch, Pat. Like all the late night hacks, all the, remember when the Putin price, all that Putin, they're like, I'll happily pay, you know, $5 more or whatever a gallon just to spin in Putin's face. Like, okay, rich guy in the bubble, what about us? What about the the, the, mm-hmm. the little guy that's not, you know what I mean? I can do like gas in LA right now. I saw a thing, Pat, seven saw. I'm like, are, how are you guys living in California right now with the gas that much, and you have to drive an hour and a half every single day to work. By, by the way, you know how they say uh, Republicans, uh, you know, uh, all they care about is they, they want to take care of their uh, oil people is what they want to do. Yeah. This is all they want to do. Really? Okay. Do you know, go to this article, Wall Street Journal. I'm going to send it to you right now. Uh, 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 do you know that the oil companies, the uh, biggest profitable quarter ever was under what president? Was it under Bush? Was it under Reagan, percentage-wise? Was it under Trump? I mean, it's got to be under Trump, Clinton? right? It has to be under Trump, right? Nope. Record-breaking, I just send it to you right now if you see it, record-breaking profits for ExxonMobil was for under Exxon. who? If you had to Is guess? The one and only, the GOAT, Joseph Biden. Oh, guy, serious? No question about it. How's that? Look at the amount of profits these guys are making under a Democratic president, Okay. Exxon, go to the top. Exxon, 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 Exxon. Vault Vault. to record annual profits of $55.7 billion under who? Joe Biden. Joe Biden's policies. How does does that happen, Pat? Well, I mean, obviously, these guys are more noble people, and they they would (laughs) never help the oil companies make more money. Never. But they did. As weird as it sounds, Hmm. this is when sometimes you look at policies and you're like, well, those guys are for those guys. Oh, we would never defend those guys. Oh, we're giving money to help the poor, and this is what we're doing. Really? Your policies is what made uh, America have nearly 10 people that are worth $100 billion. Because when you gave your trillions of dollars to the poor people or middle America, all they did is went and gave the money to the, the corporations, and they spent the money. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, 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 Emotionally, somebody may say, well, this is great. I mean, we're doing the right thing, such a noble thing. Yeah, the problem is, People still don't know how to save. The problem is people still don't know how money works. The problem is people still don't know the basic fundamentals of things that you do to manage your finances. They still don't know that you give them more money, they're going to spend it. Yeah, and, and it's crazy to see that, Pat, and especially with this, with the administration's push on green and no fracking and no nothing. How is that? Like, that's crazy to see that they're making – That's a record. Vaulted. Not, yeah. They didn't say jump. Vaulted. To 55, but that's insane. Yeah, bro. I mean, they should go. They should, Biden and the Democrats should go to the oil companies and say, listen, guys, support us next year. We're going to make you more money. Look how much we've done for you. Yeah. So Go green. Go greener. Yeah. We're going to get richer. They announced it. You know how U Haul announced the MVP of the year was Newsom? Yeah. You know, exam, yes. exam, did you hear at their annual convention? No. Annual convention, MVP of the year, Joseph Biden. They just, no, no, I'm just kidding. But I, know, I mean, it should be. That's go ahead. hilarious. No, you know, it's, if you listen to the administration, you know, you see a lot of these stats that come out that, that no one in the media, words are words. Words until real numbers show up and then prove them false. And all of the stuff, like on the number of jobs there, you saw one of the responses there was to it. Biden saying, we've created all these jobs. No, he didn't create all these jobs. It was basically, if you look at restaurants and hospitality, and by the way, part of the American savings rate 
Pat, we all know this, is Americans couldn't travel in 2001, couldn't go out to a, a dinner, couldn't go even for, you know, date night out of town to a little spa that you could afford maybe or something with your with your wife. You were inside. So it was kind of like savings by default a little bit because the personal, as you like to say, the F&B budget had been, you know, held up by the lockdown. But Biden goes out and says, hey, I've created all these jobs. Da, 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 da. No, it's not. It's all these people are coming back. All the hospitality workers that were basically furloughed came back to their hospitality jobs. That's not a new job. It would be like this. Me and the biz doc babe have some trouble. So we agree to get counseling and we do a little separation for three months while we get counseling. Then on her birthday, we announce that we're back together. And I walk into a room full of people and say, hi, I'd like you to meet my new wife. That is what Biden, <laughs> <laughs> that is, what Biden is just doing with the jobs report. That's hilarious. Tom. But uh, Yeah. So uh, anyway, so again, you look at the numbers. So one side says things are going to be okay. The other side says we're not going to be in recession. Look at the numbers, what's going to happen. The reality is nobody fully knows what is going on. Okay, Everybody's purely speculating, including us. But what Adam said is, where it goes slow, drip, drip. I thought at first he was going to get up and start dancing like he was like doing some drip, kind of a drip. song, but he wasn't. Drip, drip. It's going to go, and then all of a sudden, boom, it drops, yeah. and everybody says, holy shit, you know? Yeah. So, And the opposite can happen as well, which the opposite, and all of a sudden you wake up, you're like, how the hell did Dow Jones get to 42,000? That is the crazy part about the economy, mm -hmm. okay? That's why no one in the history of it has been able to have a 100% track record mm -hmm. of guessing what happens next, yeah. okay? Yeah. It's yeah. a gamble. And, yeah. and all this just got highlighted over the last two, three years. Market tanks, black swan event, didn't see this happening, shut down, everything's going down. Uh, how much did the stock market go down the first six months of COVID? 40%? Whatever it was. Boom. Bounce back. Higher than ever. Hit 30,000. First time ever. Yeah. And we're seeing these wild swings in numbers. Personal savings rates higher than it's ever been. A year later, lowest savings rates. I think I think we, we, we're we not fully appreciating how fucking insane mm -hmm. COVID was from yeah. a money standpoint. A world shutdown standpoint. Supply chain. I think people get it, but we're finally just kind of trying to make sense of these numbers. And then didn't Biden just announce that as of May 2023, in the next few months, officially we're done? Is that what, what was that announcement? Did well, you see that? We said it once, but this this is the done done. This yeah, is like we're the, done. This is like the Tom Brady retirement again. Oh, wink, wink. Oh yeah, again. yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, I think you're I think you're right. It's May. He's like, okay, now it's really really done. Yeah, these wild swings in numbers I think should be expected after such a black swan well, event. We oh. just covered a lot of different things right there. Let's go to the next story here. Uh, Tom Brady retiring from football for good. Second time run. Emotional message that he gave. I wore his jersey yesterday. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this thing here, but obviously seeing him make the announcement uh, and now taking a break to go with the family. Nobody knows what he's going to be doing next. He's already got a massive contract for himself. It's a once-in-a-lifetime uh, player to see what he did, seven championships. The argument becomes the following is – should we moving forward say he is the Brady of that, 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 or should we still say he is the Jordan of such and such? Do, do, that's the biggest debate. And that's some people may question. even come in and say, wait a minute, what you're talking about is great, but imagine being the greatest player in the world of a sport that is the most popular player sport in the world, which is soccer. We should moving forward say he is the Messi. Wow. So wow. what is we have to we have to figure it out right now. And the world has to follow. Okay, <laughs> right now we have to figure it out. Okay, we're gonna yeah. set the standard for everybody. Okay. Else. Is it Brady, Jordan, or Messi moving forward? Okay, in um, in 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 the world because you're in soccer. So like you have, you have to say to, Messi in the world yeah. in the United States of America, Brady or Jordan. I, oh, fuck. I mean, I grew up with Jordan, so and that's my that's it's, my guy. So as far as like the greatest, 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 greatest of anything, it's MJ. It's not even a Michael question. Jordan. However, why, no, why, why why do you say that? Because Brady left, went to the Bucks, and won a Super Bowl with another team. Did Jordan win a, a championship with the Wizards? Oh. You know what? You're right, Rob. Michael Jordan, no no bueno. You you got me. No, I, you got me. But he said, <laughs> well, I don't. What he's saying is though, but yes. tra record wise, seven seven championships went to a different team to win. I think the greatest. In the world is messy. I think in the United States, I got to go with Jordan. I'm sorry. And by the way, I'm a Giants fan, and we beat him twice. Uh, or else, if it wasn't for the New York Giants, he'd have two more rings. I would, FYI. I'll tell you this. You're welcome. I'll tell you this. We can have that debate. That's great. There are, these are all, this is, this is Goat Mountain right here. Yeah. There's only one 
the most eligible bachelor in the world at this point. And that guy. Uh, Thomas Brady. C- yeah, Kaj- 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 has a Number one. So he, he doesn't need to be on Bumble. He doesn't need to be no, on Tinder. not at all. He is Tinder. He's Bumble. He <laughs> is <laughs> Tom Bumble. Okay. He is the honey to the bees. Can, I'm telling you, can I ask you guys the a, bees an, needs. an honest question? If he didn't retire, I mean, if he did go with the retirement, the first one, would he still be married? Probably yes. Are you serious? That was obviously that the was final straw. No, yes, no, that was the straw no. that broke you know the, the camel's back. You know the saying with the horses and the camel's I back? That straw that broke the what, camel's what, what, back. What you, you know say? the horse. I disagree. Yeah. By the way, in, in the world of sports, when a, a goat retires and they go from that life to a day-to-day, the, the, they're not used to seeing each other as much. as a Part of why it worked yeah. was because it was wow. – a, a part-time marriage. It's a full-time commitment, but it's a part-time. I like that. You know, marriage and bodybuilding that happens, and baseball and basketball and football. I mean, pools. You know, Jordan. You know, so you got so many of them. You go through very, very few of them uh, stay together. It's a very hard thing. And so Tom Brady, with where she was, I have a feeling they were having issues way before that on the way they want to live, different lifestyles. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, I think uh, I think either way, it would have just taken a little longer. That's my opinion. And but anyway, but because you're saying Pat, because you know, that time apart, like with seasons, for the average person, you can't have a season. It'd be cool you know, to go you know, to your wife you know, and like, babe, I need two months. Let me tell you, I gotta go. <laughs> Vinny, you know when 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 somebody says something like this, they'll say, "Man, I would have loved if I would have worked with uh, Elon Musk, I would have mm. freaking killed it. Mm. If I would have worked under Steve Jobs, I would have freaking killed it. You know, if I if I had a teammate like Brady, dude, it would have been awesome. You know, if I was married to Tom Brady and I had a husband like him, oh, yeah. dude, I would do anything for the guy, right? And then you, let's just say you do, mm. and you're working for Steve Jobs. What do you think Steve Jobs would do? Do you think he would sit there and say? Let me sell you the vision of where Apple's going to be in the future one day. Yeah. And one day we're going to build this machine. A computer is going to fit in a small little case like this. And you would say, hey, what a visionary. Or do you think Steve Jobs would say, you guys got six months to fit this big-ass <laughs> box in this or you're fired. <laughs> Period. Okay? Yeah. All right. So the point is like. You want to work for Steve Jobs until you work for Steve Jobs, yeah. and you say, this guy's a freaking tyrant. Right. What the yeah, hell exactly. is the matter with Just this like guy? The, and the, then so you, you're like, oh, I'd love to marry Tom Brady. Oh, Tom, it'd be so freaking. And all of a sudden, boom, you, you're, you're Giselle, a uh, beautiful model, you know, married to the guy, Tom Brady. And you're like, holy freaking shit, I want him to obsess over me like all the other men I've ever dated. Mm-hmm. This guy loves football more than me. I can't be with a guy like that. And shit, I don't want to be with a guy like this. Mm-hmm. And then you go with a you know jujitsu guy that's uh, got an instructor who's got more time to spend time with you than a Tom Brady. Good yeah, point. there's a lot of people that want to be guys with people like this until you are with them, and you're like, holy shit! Maybe I should have just married the other school teacher. <laughs> And uh, both of them don't work, by the way, because you want the bad boy and you want the school teacher, and that guy just doesn't exist. Okay. <laughs> yes, Anyways, that, that, I, uh, that was more like a rant. I love okay? it. Though. I, I love it. No, but you're right. You just you're right. Some, you know, it's um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, by the way, when Jen and I were dating, I told her, I said, "Baby, if you want a nine to five guy, I'm not it." We went to a uh, uh, we went to a counselor, mm-hmm. and it's one guy, a Christian counselor, who the church was sent to. And uh, have you heard me tell the story? No, or no? So we go to this counselor, and I said, "So, so tell me about yourself." Yeah, I'm, I'm a, you know, uh, my wife and I've been married 33 years. I'm kind of impressive. So if somebody can take advice from. I said, "What's your secret sauce for your marriage working out?" For 33 years, we have had dinner every night at six o'clock. We've hmm. never missed it. Gee. I believe that's the key to success. I said, "What business are you in?" <laughs> Oh, I'm a school teacher. How about your wife? She's also a school teacher. I said, you know, it's so awesome meeting you. Here's the $200, babe. We got to go. <laughs> yeah. He was so uncomfortable. <laughs> Jennifer's uncomfortable. She's like, babe, just let's at least. I said, no, babe, there's nothing we can talk here. Yeah. We get in the car. She says, what was that all about? I said, babe, I'm not a school teacher. I'm not going to be home at 6 o'clock dinner. This is not the life. You want that at somebody else. You don't. We want to go take over the world. This is a very different mentality. But if yeah. you are that person, Fine. go be it. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm just not a school teacher. I feel you. But you I think it's so important what you're saying about having those conversations up front. Like you established early and often with Jen, hey, I'm not that nine to five guy. So what's the, um, th- there's something no, I listen, say offend you? There's yeah. something I- <laughs> We're Middle Eastern. It's what's, yeah, we wh- what's the famous quote where it says men marry, marry women hoping that they will never change? And that women marry men hoping that they will change. And then invariably they'll both be disappointed. I think it's very it, important. It goes, it goes, men marry women hoping they don't change. And they do 
women marry men hoping they change and they don't. Right. Yeah. And they both end up disappointed. Yeah. So yeah. I think if you establish what you were just talking about up front, hey, listen, I'm not that nine to five guy. That six o'clock dinner thing every yeah. night, I'm just shooting a freaking video by six o'clock. I might not even be home till eight. So like this is the guy you're going to marry. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Because I don't want seven years down the road, I want to be like, why are yeah. you never home? It's like, I told you that up front. Yeah. And and, and going off what you said, Pat, just really, really fast. I think those moments where you are like that time off, I'm not saying being away from your wife forever, but like that season that he's gone and whatever, I think it helps because, you know, you're apart. And then when you see each other, it's amazing. But if you're there every single day in the person's face, it's a little, it's a little too much. Tom, yeah, the fables never match, you know, the fables and the stories never match reality. And you can read a lot of books and biographies about Bezos, about Jobs. Uh, I love the story. It was in uh, Forbes or Fortune. It goes way back. Jobs is very frustrated by a thing called Mobile Me. Remember about 12, 15 years ago, maybe longer than that, Apple had a product called Mobile Me. It's not really working right. Hauls everybody into a, a conference room who is working on it. So there is like apparently about 100 people in there. And he points a product manager and he says, tell me what mobile me, what the spec is, what the product is. Well, mobile me is bop, 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 bop. They gave him. And he looks at the guy and he said, okay. And they said, he started turn red. And Steve Jobs says, well, then why the flip doesn't it do that? <laughs> You're done. And he points to his left to two people. They are leading the project and he leaves the conference room. Oh, Ladies wow. and gentlemen, that is the romantic view. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. exactly. Oh, only if I, you know, you know, but by the way, that whole concept about you are the person, you are the average of five people you hang out with. There's typically the one guy in that group that you don't like because he's constantly challenging you. And you, most people would have a very hard time being friends with a guy like Steve Jobs. Oh, it's God. not mm -hmm. a... Easy friendship. It's good on the outside. It's tough on the inside. Okay. I love that point you made, by the way, about the, your network is your net worth and you are the combination of the five people you said, but it's usually one guy. One guy I that holds it that. together. Oh, one shit. guy that holds it together. Okay. And Vinny, thank you for holding us all together, brother. M Here, yeah, back to you. No okay, question. By, by the way, just so everybody <laughs> knows, Vinny is probably the, the I don't know, no, he's the second best athlete in this room. Vinny's a ridiculous athlete i don't understand why you're so good now, middle east like how do we i don't know where it there's came. nine forms of intelligence okay okay interpersonal you're good with people intrapersonal you're independently you're good by yourself like you can spend time you, some people call you a loner you're not you're just very confident you're self-aware uh three uh numerical you're good with numbers Four, musical, you're good with music. Yeah. Five is spatial, you can go into a room and say, you gotta put something here, you gotta put something here, you gotta put something here, I would put the window here, I would put the kitchen here. I got zero spatial, okay, when it comes down to, <laughs> okay, then you have uh, uh, a uh, uh, kinesthetic, which is body, you're very good with body, you're, that's, you're one of them, that's uh, athletically, you guys just naturally can do that. And then there's a few other ones that are out there, right? But it, it's a natural intelligence. Some people that just pick up a ball can, and they can play it. Weird. And by the way, the same is true about people who are not. You ever heard somebody watch somebody that played the same sport, God knows, over and over and over again, they still look weird. <laughs> it's like the guy that takes salsa lessons for seven years <laughs> and he goes to a club and dances salsa and you're like, I swear to God, this is uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> Yeah. And he's been doing it for seven <laughs> damn years, and it's like a, a robotic dance, <laughs> dancing like that they do. It just doesn't make sense. So That's, That's not you. Anyway, yeah. let's go to the next like story. Ben Ron DeSantis. Ron. Let's do Ron DeSantis. If Ron. you guys are okay with this. Ron DeSantis. I don't want to upset anybody. Let's yeah, talk about yeah. some uh, Ron DeSantis here. Here we go. Ron DeSantis reportedly preparing for 2024 presidential run. A more angry Donald Trump takes shot at this loyal Florida governor. This just happened uh, recently. But I want to go to the most updated story of where DeSantis, uh, uh, there it is, the gloves are off. Donald Trump brands 2024, right? Ron DeSantis, very disloyal. Uh, uh, where's the one? That, okay, there it is. That's the one. It says, DeSantis response to Trump's criticism says, verdict has been rendered by Florida voters. Not holding back, by the way. Okay, not holding back at all. Uh, uh, so here's, here's what it sounds like. Uh, 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 Former President Donald Trump has claimed that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis owes his success to Donald Trump's administration and that a, hypo a hypothetical presidential bid would be insulting. Ron would have not been governor if it wasn't for me. So when I hear he might run, I consider that very disloyal, which, by the way, he is right. If it wasn't for Trump's endorsement, Ron doesn't win governorship. I mean, whether you like Trump or you like DeSantis, are you going to vote Republican ticket no matter what? Or you don't like either one of them? That endorsement helped him get, uh, he won by 34,000 votes. DeSantis responded to Trump's comments by citing his recent landslide victory for uh, with Florida voters. 
Well, look what I would say, uh, uh, would just say is this. I roll out of bed. I have people attacking me from all angles, DeSantis said. And the good thing is that the people are able to render a judgment on that, whether they reelect you or not. Wow. DeSantis was overwhelmingly mm. reelected in November for his second term, leading Florida and won the highest percentage of the vote that any Republican governor candidate has in the history of a state's history. He also won by the largest raw vote margin of one and a half million votes uh, than any governor candidate has ever had in the Florida history. The verdict has been rendered by the people of the state of Florida. Okay, hmm. which, by the way, you go from winning by thirty-four thousand votes and you go winning one and a half million votes, and you win Miami Day. You win. You win Day. You and this is what he did is absolutely unbelievable to validate how great of a job he did for four years. But that doesn't mean. Trump's endorsement didn't help him win. I, Without Trump's endorsement, he wouldn't have won. Anyways, I'll open it up. And, Go for it. Pat, just going off, because he said he claimed that he, you know, he owes him for the success. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Me living in California, not really in the political wor uh, world, I didn't hear who, I didn't know the governor of Florida. I didn't know anything about that. Trump's attitude towards the media and being bold, and then all of a sudden I did start seeing DeSantis started becoming that guy where I was like, oh, that, oh my God, he's kind of like him, where he's calling out, the, you know, pointing at people, talk, telling reporters in their face. I don't know if it was the Trump like attitude or the mystique, but that type of attitude I've seen come like Carrie Lake and all these Very people. Very interesting point. Isn't that weird though, Pat? Yeah. I, and this is coming from a guy that lives in California that's a veteran that never gave a damn about politics. Then I started seeing COVID and it was during COVID where DeSantis was like, no, no, we're not going to be like these people. And that drew the attention to him because he was Trump-like. You feel mm -hmm. me? So, I mean, say what you want. I think a little bit of that attitude did brush off on him. The most impressive thing of DeSantis' uh, win for governor in 2022 was that he took Hillsborough County. I know Miami-Dade is often very much liberal. There is no more liberal county in the state of Florida than Hillsborough. That's Tampa, St. Petersburg. That is where Charlie Crist resides. That's his hometown. And he beat Charlie Crist by how many votes? 40,000 votes. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at Basically, if you want to give, if you want to call each of Trump and DeSantis a stock, yeah, right. Clearly, one has been on the upswing since 2020, Obviously. and one has been on the major decline mm -hmm. since 2020. Um, and shots fired, by the way, because DeSantis does not respond to Trump. He takes it. He takes it. He takes it. But read into exactly what he said. And the good thing is that the people are able to render a judgment on that on whether they reelect you or not. Read between yeah. the lines here. He's basically saying, I got reelected by a landslide. You did not. Sorry to inform you. And we often say that if not for COVID, Trump would have probably been reelected. 100%. Mm -hmm. If not for COVID, we probably wouldn't all know Ron DeSantis' name. I, I okay? agree with you. You don't know the nope. random governor from a state. doesn't mm -hmm. matter. No. Nope. The reality is COVID was uh, Trump's Achilles heel. And COVID was what made Ron DeSantis. I agree. So we'll see what happens. Right now, at this point, if you look at the numbers, you know, I'm a big Vegas guy. It is now DeSantis's election to lose. Wow. He's passed Trump in the primary polls, and we'll see what happens. But we've got a long road ahead, no yeah. doubt. But, but, but here's the thing, though. Love him or hate him, don't you think just being Trump... Wouldn't you be furious if from even before you got in or you got called that you, you won yeah. the Department of Justice with the FBI, with Peter Strzok and all these freaking guys with Hillary Clinton, all colluding. The actual collusion was the left. And then, bro, that, that all that presidency and then COVID, everybody, every, the whole swamp against you. Don't you think he kind of wants to come in and have a shot where all that shit is already done? And then you could be like, all right, I'm coming in raw. No. Now you guys can't play that Russia shit again. All the all the all the colluding, all that shit. No, no. Now I'm coming in without all you guys, all the deep state behind me. I mean, I would be a pissed off, number one. But number two, I would tell the people, hey guys, how about give me a shot? Without everybody against me. Let me, yeah, I'm gonna talk shit. Yeah, I'm gonna be brash, but give me a chance. You know what I mean? Because uh, be honest, it wasn't fair. It wasn't love him or hate him, it wasn't fair. And then COVID comes. I mean, how much shit could go wrong for one guy? Yeah, be honest. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. True, You're making though. a good case here, but I think this is one thing I will say. There's nothing uglier than politics. Obvious. Presidential politics. So yeah. when you enter the ring, you know exactly it's going to be but, a mudslinging contest galore. But, you don't think DeSantis is literally emotionally, spiritually, mentally getting ready. God forbid you run. 
every disgusting thing you've ever done is going to be exposed. What was great about Trump is talk about ten flaw done. <laughs> Anyone grab them by the pussy? This they're yeah. done. They're, they're yeah. They're no canceling ammo. their campaign. There's no more ammo. He's like, hell yeah, yeah. I did that locker room talk, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So, it, yeah, it's a dirty, dirty game out 100%. there. And you better but, be ready but, but for when, it. But when your own government and the Department of Justice, as you're a sitting president, is illegally going by, and then nothing happens to them, come welcome on, to boy. politics, buddy. No, but I, 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 I get it. But I, I get well, it. It's horrible. But no, but you, but, but you're 100 right. Yeah. Donald Nobody's... Trump has been shot. He's wounded. He has like, what else can you say about me, bro? Stormy Daniels. What do you? What? Stormy Bring Daniels is such a. Not, yeah. By the way, the that's so the, the, the Stormy Daniels lawyer. Whatever happened to that oh, guy, Avenatti? Whatever happened with? Tom, you do, you have any, okay? do you have any thoughts on this or no? Yeah, I think, you know, I see it both ways. I, I look at I look at Trump and I say, look, here's a guy that used his personal political capital. You know, whether you love him or hate him, he used his personal political capital to help Ron DeSantis at a key time. And Ron DeSantis is not governor and does not launch the, the bigger phase of his political life without that endorsement. And. Trump is saying, listen, I lost, but I'm going to get ahead of steam. I'm going to get the band back together. Uh, some will be with me. Some won't. But I'm going to get it back together, and I'm going to run again. And I think he's told everybody that in whispers. And he is disappointed that DeSantis is putting together a campaign to go run. Unfortunately, this is not, you know, King's X. This is not the way it works. I mean, you look at the... You look at the the Democrat field. Hillary was running. I am running, and I'm going to go, and everybody stay out of the way. Nope, Obama ran. All those people stepped up. When it's time to run for president, it's a – Adam, you're, it's the way to say it. It is such a dirty game, and you have to keep reminding yourself as you analyze it, mm -hmm. this is dirty by design, yeah. right? Say, I'm, Hillary's like, I was Secretary of State. I'm smart as hell. I had the first health care initiative. I have all these things. Stay the flip out of my way. No, mm -hmm. there was nine people on stage with her and Obama beat her. Yep. Um, and, you know, that just that's just the way this works. Yeah. yeah. Pat, let me ask you, you. I think you've only watched one Netflix show ever from uh, beginning to end. Well, Greg Scher told me to watch Ted Lasso because okay. of Tom. So that. I watched that. <laughs> you saw House of Cards, but not the whole thing. You saw the whole thing. What was your... Just season one. Okay. okay, so that's the only show you've only ever show. watched. Never watched. House of Cards. That's Sopranos, what I'm going with this. I've yeah. done... Oh. Yeah. Which essentially that's Kevin Spacey. Yeah. By the way, what happened to him? He's Is he getting doing okay. He gets, a, he gets sexual assault charges and okay. nothing. He'll never go. He's just but untouchable. You, uh, where I'm going with he this really is, is, I think. If anybody understands how dirty business is, and you know everything you're working on with, you know your enemies and all that. Not that you needed to watch House of Cards to really fully fundamentally realize how disgusting and dirty politics is, but how dirty did you did you think it was? Is it what are you seeing out there? Everything that. Using your house of cards as a reference point to business the or dirty, the dirtiness of politics compared to business, if you want. Well, I I don't know. I'm not in it. You know, I'm not in the political world. But when I'm, you know, in the business world, it's very ugly. But at least in the business world, there are some laws and regulation. These guys are using laws and regulation as like. It, it, the way many of these politicians that have been around, they're no different than the guys who were in New York saying, hey, you know, the Gambino family protects our restaurant. Hey, you mess with us. You got to go talk to the Colombo family. Mm -hmm. Hey, you got to go to such and such family. And they're like, hey, hey, Tony, I'm sorry, man. Don't worry. I'm good. Please tell Sammy we're okay. We don't have any issues. You want me to call Sammy? No, no, you don't. I'm good. Totally good. The way these guys are running politics is they're saying, oh, you want to say something? You want me to contact? You want me to get? Okay, no problem. See what I do with IRS is the Gambino family. DOJ is the Colombo family. Yep. You know, you got the uh, FBI is the Genovese family. You want me to keep going? Like, they got <laughs> these five right. families. Yes. I'm going to call one of the families and look what we're going to do to you. We're going to ruin your life is what we do. And that's what they do. So they're, they're a bunch of pawns that lean onto those five families to destroy people's lives. And they're very, very good at it. So this is why when you run for office, we're going to have a good time together. Thank you. I can't I look wait, forward to that, I guys. All right, so let's go to the next story. So let's go to the next story. Let's go to the next story. Republican Nikki Haley is set to announce a run for president. Nikki Haley is set to announce a run for president. Uh, Nikki Haley, a former 
South Carolina governor who also served in the Trump administration is preparing to run for 2024. The Republican is set to be the first to challenge former President Donald Trump in a GOP primary election. Haley served as Trump's U.S. ambassador to the United Nations for nearly two years from 2017-2018 when she resigned prior to her tenure uh, in the Trump administration. Haley led the state of South Carolina as the governor from 2011 to 2017 when she left to take the job at the U.N. Haley was the first woman to serve as governor of South Carolina in 2021. Haley has said she wouldn't run for president if Trump ran again, but recently deviated from her typical line calling for a new generation of leadership in the Republican Party in an appearance on Fox News that she later posted on Twitter. So Nikki Haley, what are your thoughts on Nikki Haley running for president? Well, I think there's two things. So I'm, what I'm going to talk about uh, macro, micro, because you know that's how I do it. On the macro level, she has now come out and there's more than just DeSantis has walked onto the debate stage. There's now three podiums, Trump, DeSantis, and Haley. This opens the door for others to declare as well on the macro stage. And so what that does, this actually helps DeSantis because it's not DeSantis breaking rank and saying, I want to run. Now it's multiple people. And it's like, hey, this is a primary. This is what we do. This is the process. So Donald, you're going to be on stage and uh, there's other people going to be there. So on the macro level, I think this helps DeSantis because it opens up the field and it's not just Trump versus DeSantis. There's many people running. The second thing on the micro level, I think she's positioning for a VP spot. Oh, wow. That's my that's my thought. What do you think, Pat? Um, you and I are on the same page with that. I, I think what they are doing uh, is exactly that. Yeah, that's for me. It's exactly that. Uh, uh, they're, they're speaking very highly of each other. When you get on that stage, the strategy, my opinion, is the fact that Nikki Haley is going to be the one to go after DeSantis, not mm. Trump. And they're going to double tag team. Oh. And then eventually Nikki could end up being a VP and by the way, she's a very qualified VP if she ends up becoming a VP. Uh, some even thought at one point she wasn't on Trump camp because she called him out on a couple different things. So this is, you know, this is a very, very strategy, strategic thing that's taking place. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting to see the camp that – because there is a Republican camp that doesn't want Trump. And there is a Republican camp that only believes Trump's the one that needs to finish up his second term and fix everything that started. Either way – this is now what we're seeing strategy taking place between the two. It'll be fun to see what direction the Santa's. This go. was an episode on, I sort of got on House mm -hmm. of Cards where where uh, Kevin Spacey's character teamed up with somebody else during a debate, and I mean I I see it all playing. But dude, honestly, I'm what, just hearing you guys talk about the stage and the bro. I swear to God, I would pay to watch. I'm excited to see that moment of. DeSantis, Trump, and her. I think that UFC should get on board, TV. bro, and just make it like announce them and have them come in. The, dude, I would 100% put 50 bucks to watch this. The first we time. We still need to put our bet on. Yeah, and, and, and mind you, that's going to divide the party, and then we mean you uh, pay for what. I think, I think Tom hit it on the head. I think Pat agreed with him. She is full on auditioning for a vice presidential role mm -hmm. for sure. in the movie called 2024. Yeah. <laughs> that, there, there's no chance she's being elected president of the United States. No. Okay. My opinion, hear me out. I agree. It's Trump or DeSantis. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, she ain't no like walk in the park. She's cunning, smart, smart, attractive enough to to basically hold, hold her, her own, own on the stage. Mm -hmm. She was a governor. Wasn't she the ambassador to the UN under Trump? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she ain't no joke. So just House of Cards style. This She's is, uh, got some stuff up her sleeve. Yeah. Let's see who she attacks. Let's see who she embraces. And it's not just up her sleeve. It's between her ears. Um. I, mm -hmm. I had that privilege of sitting with her and with um, uh, Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne in Dallas at a small gathering. They were trying to raise funds and stuff. And she was there to support Beth's campaign. And there was about 50 of us at this little reception before the big reception. You know how those things work. Um, and somebody asked her to give a breakdown of, you know, foreign trade, tariff, no tariff and things. And she went for 15 minutes with one of the most elegant dissertations. And I'm like, wow, not only does she know what she's talking about, she's in it. And that was when she was serving at the UN. So this is also a very smart person that would balance a ticket and she would play her foreign policy cards and experience with trade in the UN. Oh, wow. Her and DeSantis, unbeatable ticket. Her and wow. Trump. Still very beatable, my yeah. opinion. You might be right. Wait, her and DeSantis, unbeatable ticket. Her, her and Trump, still to be. Yeah. Because I think, hmm. bottom line is this. We're talking about primaries. We get it. 
there's so many independents out there. There's yeah. so many, you know, conservative Democrats who will gladly, loudly, proudly walk into a voting booth and say, I voted for Ron DeSantis. No doubt. Nice. You, there's not those many of those at Trump these days. Yeah. I'm sorry. By the way, we went over 6,500 live. I just wanted you to oh, saw So that. here's what I just did. I just mm-hmm. sent a text message to the people that originally signed up for the podcast. Okay. They just got an email with a link to the event. By the end of the podcast, I'm going to send the link to everybody here. Those guys got a 45 minute uh, Ooh, head, head start. Uh, head Woo! start, and then yeah. we'll do the live podcast. So, yeah. Uh, and, and, and let me, some people are asking a question about Steven Crowder. Let me tell you guys what happened with Steven Crowder. Steven Crowder. We had in the past tried to get him on the podcast, Rob. I think we reached out a couple times in the past. Correct. And then after the video he did, calling out Daily Wire, uh, his camp reached out saying Stephen Crowder would like to come on the podcast. We said, yeah, no problem. We scheduled for a Wednesday to be on the podcast. And uh, that uh, uh, Monday morning or Sunday, uh, we got an email saying, well, a, a family emergency took place and he can't be here, which we said, listen, family emergency happens. We understand it. Uh, uh, you know, maybe we can do it earlier or a different day. No, he can't do it. It's a major family emergency. He can't be there. No problem. Then uh, what was very uh, interesting is that even though there was a family emergency, that Monday after the family emergency was on Tim Pool's podcast. Weird. Okay. So uh, you go on Tim Pool's podcast, but you tell us there's a family emergency that happens specifically on Wednesday, but you can do, because typically when it's a family emergency, you may be taking a few days off. So here's all I will say. Guys, we've dealt with presidents. We've dealt with billionaires. We've dealt with uh, uh, the athletes, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Hart. We've dealt with like AAA listers, which everybody that becomes an A-listers, everybody is typically doing what? What can we do for you? Accommodate you. Hey, all this other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And we've never had a person that cancels like that and just says, hey, you know, and then later on the email comes, well, we can't do it right now. Maybe later on you'll be the first for us to talk. And we don't play those games. We don't like those games. So there is a part of it where you think some of the criticism that he got, if it was real or not, we don't know. Again, I've never spoken to him. I've never had a call with him. I've never had a sit down with him. We were more than happy to... uh, uh, to have a uh, civil conversation here to see what took place with a guy like that. But for those of you that are fans of his, that were expecting him to be here, they canceled last minute due to family emergency and still went on Tim Pool podcast on that Monday instead of a Wednesday. We are not sitting here saying we know what the emergency was or not. I'm just telling you I'm not accustomed to a family emergency taking place, yet you go to a different podcast on a Monday. So that mm-hmm. is for the people that are asking about Crowder. Now, having said that, uh, James O'Keefe was scheduled to be here today. James and I are texting right now each other. We are trying to get him to be on the podcast tomorrow. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. We got to get him on a flight. He's coming from a different place, disclosed, uh, undisclosed location. We got to get him in here. So if you see us having a podcast tomorrow with James O'Keefe, it may happen. So, But I can't guarantee you until James is sitting here. And there's two other big, massive names we're working on that reached out to us to be on the podcast. We won't announce it. Until it happens. Moving yeah. forward, mm-hmm. once we know, we'll uh, uh, we'll let you know when we're going live with these guys. There's a lot of interesting people. I had a very, very, very interesting call with somebody yesterday who is extremely uh, 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 a name that everybody knows, a name that's a, that we're working on some big projects as well to potentially come on the podcast. But we'll see what's going to happen with Calendar. Were you going to say something? I just wanted to address back yeah. to the Steven Crowder thing. I don't, do we want to get into what happened with Ben Shapiro and all that? I mean, it's very public at this point. Sure, go for yeah. it. But I, I guess, what are the details of what happened? I, I, I There's things you follow and there's, there's things you follow kind of, you know, peripherally. I saw what was going on, but I what I did see was Ben Shapiro's response. He was not happy of with this Of course not. <laughs> He was not happy whatsoever. What was your take on Shapiro, Crowder, Daily Wire? What, what exactly happened? So what let me you know? let me give you a, a dis- disclaimer so everybody knows. I don't have a relationship with Ben Shapiro. Him and I have done one interview together. It was fascinating. The guy's a brilliant mind, but we don't text. We don't talk. We haven't spoken to him. No conversations. The same with Candace Owens. The same with Jeremy Boring. Any of that stuff. There's been zero communication with them at all. An invitation to the podcast, zero. None of that stuff in the last however long it's been, we've had zero conversations with those guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think they're very necessary. I think they're very talented. I thought Jeremy Boring to go through the entire contract was uh, extremely bold, extremely confident to do it. Uh, you know, you and that, that's Ben Shapiro's partner for those because he's not a household name. Everyone yeah. knows Shapiro. No, no, but Candace he Owen. is okay. a household name in this space. The Got guy it. is a 
heavyweight, legit a type of a guy that you would want to have as a president, COO, C-suite, CEO. He's the guy. He used to be partners, I believe, years ago with a guy named Zach Levi. Zach Levi is the underdog movie of Kurt Warner. Zach Levi wow, is wow, wow. what he called the, the Shazam guy, the good-looking guy. Yeah, so th- this is not a lightweight guy. This guy right here. He went after Gillette in a way that was freaking okay. epic. Brilliant. Brilliant. So now, As you were, yeah. Yeah, so, so both of these guys. And by the way, on the other side, Steven Crowder's maybe uh, at the top of the list of – like. Who Bill Maher is at the top of the left, probably Crowder is at the top of the right to be the comedian doing what he does. So Mm -hmm. Crowder is a absolute, some will put him at the top above everybody. Uh, on the comedy and political side, debating anyone, he's he's fantastic. What was the thing? What he uh, he, his, I learned about Change Crowder when he changed my mind. Yeah, changed my mind. So, exactly. Yeah, so there there is that part, and uh, there is a massive. Uh, but here's what's going to happen: when a Crowder makes a claim like that, yeah, and you record, and then Ben Shapiro goes after, why would you record your friend? And you know how, who's going to trust to do business with anybody when you record somebody? Everybody that walks into a room with Stephen Crowder is going to be like, this guy's probably recording the conversation. That's on everybody's mind now, moving forward. Oh, damn, when straight. you do something like that, so it's tough when you do business with someone like that it's chance so that's what the call out is on the other side so here's a part yeah here's a part steven crowder now when you go out there and you declare your intentions as publicly as he did you best back it up you best back it up so here's the problem march of 09 i'm sitting down with a man named bill i told him after dinner we had with George Will, I want to announce my mission statement as saving America and bringing back the free enterprise system and hope to American families. He says, this is the mission statement of the company. He says, yes. He says, don't do it. I said, why is that? He says, if you do this, how are you going to be doing it? I said, well, I'm going to work with middle-income families. I'm going to work with minorities. I'm going to teach them about sales, business, capitalism, finance, insurance, how money works. I'm going to help these guys have the mentality of a winner, competitor, discipline, why immigrants come here, the capitalistic uh, mentality, the immigrant mentality. That's what we're going to be doing. He says, if you do that, who's going to be coming to it? I'm planning on having the, uh, the presidents come to our events, senators, governors, people who understand finance, economists, comptrollers, billionaires. I want comedians, Kobe. I want all these guys to come. He says, here's my suggestion to you. If you say something like that from stage, in front of the pulpit, okay, which the event was called Saving America, Doing the Impossible, I was dressed as a uh, 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 George Washington. You can type in George Washington, Patrick, but David, maybe a picture will show up on Google. <laughs> and I get up and I said, we're going to be doing this. He says, don't do it unless you're 100% committed to it. Hmm. I said, what do you mean? He says, don't do it unless if you're 100% committed to it. Uh, 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 a video of it is somewhere around there that you can find if you can pause it and not have the audio. That's uh, uh, fast forward a little bit, fast forward a little bit, Late fast forward a little bit. Right there. That's me and Jen right there, by the way. Pause it. <laughs> Literally. That's me and Jen right there. Okay? So here's the thing. You are he the says, tallest, brownest jo- George brownest. Washington I've ever seen. So he tells me, he tells me, <laughs> by the way, he t- by the way, the year before I was dressed as George C. Scott, giving the patent speech for five minutes, that which is, is a pretty so epic speech. Okay. Okay. I hope whoever's got to send it my way, I want to see it. It's been 15, 16 years. But Crowder, he yeah. says, don't. Say that mission statement unless you 100% mean it hmm. and you're going to go out there and advance towards it. He scares the crap out of me. I step away. I don't announce it. I say, I'm not doing it. Oh, really? 30 days goes by, 60 days. I can't sleep at night. I'm so worried about it. Then the day comes, July 17th, that event. I get up and I announce the vision, mission, what we're going to be doing in July of 09. Okay? I announce it to everybody. Everybody. Everybody is flipping fire. This is JW Marriott in Palm Springs. Mm-hmm. Everybody's fired up. You know who's not fired up? I'm not fired up. That's hilarious. Because I went to sleep saying, holy shit, yeah. I better freaking do it. <laughs> yeah. So then you see David Walker, the Comptroller General of U.S., comes to the event, and I interview him. Then you see we bring Santorum. Then President shows up. Then Kobe shows up. Then Kevin Sick. Hart shows up. Then everybody's on. Then the events goes from 500 people to 1,000 people to 2,000 people to 5,000 people. MGM Grand Arena, you were there. We're putting concerts with Nelly, with oh, Nikki G. Jam with Sebastian Maniscalco, with Mario Lopez as the MC, with Shaq, all this stuff. And then it turned into what it is today. Mm-hmm. And now people say, well, what Pat said he did in the insurance space, this is not public information. This is in the insurance space on what I did. And then Value Tame kind of made some of this stuff be public. Crowder has to back it up now. And it sucks. Every night he goes to sleep, everybody's saying, where is it? Who are you signing? What are you doing? You just put yourself on blast. You put Daily Wire on blast. Who are you signing next? Who are you giving a contract to next? What are you going to be doing? That's where he's at. If he does it, Mm -hmm. guess what you got to do to Crowder? Salute. 
if he doesn't do it, you got to say Daily Wire was right. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of pressure. Wow. And welcome to the world of competition because it freaking sucks. He's been in it for a while and he's dominated as a talent. Yeah. But it's a very different game to go from a talent to running a company. Last night we had our annual uh, uh, virtual gala at uh, the other event, uh, the building. A federal. And we had you know, 10 plus thousand people on a live Zoom with us watching and we're recognizing all the MVPs, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end, we were having conversations about the, the business during COVID, what happened. Me and one of our guys, uh, co-founders, George, were talking. And I was telling him some of the things that happened with the company. The challenge of dealing with W2 is you realize there's a difference between being a great salesperson. There's a difference between being a great sales leader doing 1099 with an assistant. There's a difference between a startup founder. There's a difference with growing a company with employees in states, regulations, taxes. You're paying on 49 different states and Department of Insurance in 49 different states. Legality, ENO, bullshit, bullshit, legal, law, compliance. It's very, very annoying. So you can be a very good salesperson and suck as a sales leader. You can be a great sales leader and suck as a CEO. Absolutely suck as a CEO. This thing is hard. So Crowder can be a very good entertainer Mm -hmm. and a comedian. And suck as a CEO running a company. Yeah. Or he may be great. If he does, salutations to you. So, anyways, that's what happened with Crowder. So, if we can continue, we got a lot of other I stories. I have one quick me. follow-up. Yes. Because, by the way, kudos to everything you just said right there. What I just want to pinpoint real quick is the advice for Crowder. You took this advice and you, I, I, everything you're saying makes complete sense. What I want to ask is one specific thing. When the guy, who's the guy that said, hey, be careful. Don't do this. Don't make this announcement. Think before you do it. Yeah. Who was that guy? Bill, Bill Vogel. Okay, so Bill. So you have this vision, you have this plan, you have yeah. this idea, you have this company you want to start, and you said you're in bed, you're tossing and turning 30 days, 60 days. What was it that you were unsure of, and what kind of clarity did you need to get to say, all right, I'm doing it now? Okay. July 17th, Can what I, changed? Uh, very simple. Why are you not married with kids? <laughs> Same exact thing. Okay, what, clarity? No, no, why are you not married with kids? I mean, that's a, we, could, we do it a whole hour podcast about that. No, no, it's that. one word. It's one word. There's no other words, bro. It's the scariest word in the world. Commitment? R- responsibility. Oh, shit. Yeah, that too. Bro, that weight is so heavy. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Marriage? You know what kind of responsibility comes with risk for freaking being married? Mm. Or kids? Are you out of your mind to have one, two, three, risk four, five? It is very hard. So the same fear men, you and I have, yeah. of being married and having kids... It's the same fear and anxiety we have of saying, you want me to say I'm responsible for this mission and this vision? Vision? This is a little too much, man. I don't know. And then you're praying, you're talking, you're walking, you're trying to, because it's, you can't talk to your wife. You can't talk to your, you know, and by the way, at the time I was single. I wasn't married yet, okay? You can't talk to anybody at the time. You can't go to your dad and say, what do you think about this mission of saving America? He's like, what's saving America? Save the David family. You know <laughs> Who cares about like, America? Help me, baby. Look at this. That's hilarious. So anyways, but yeah. the point is it's a very lonely place to be when you want to cast a vision like that. So anyways, I don't want to go on this What I appreciate about that is, is that you took your time to make that decision and that announcement. Scary you thought. You go to it Scary, Lightly. scary thought, man. So, anyways, that's the idea with uh, Stephen Crowder and some of you guys with James O'Keefe. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to get him on tomorrow to find out what's going on with uh, uh, all this stuff with Pfizer. Did you see what he did with that video? That video on Twitter got 26 million views. Then you know what he does? He goes and rents. I don't want to play the video because we'll play it tomorrow and we'll James. talk about it. He goes and rents a truck, playing the video on all angles, and parks it in front of Pfizer's headquarters. Oh my god, that's a massive <laughs> troll, bro! I we love gotta, we he gotta parks build. it in front of Pfizer's headquarters, man. Yeah. You gotta be bold. Here's an to do idea that. for us. We can work on this. We need to put together a top ten troll in the world thing. Oh yeah, we got Elon that. there. He, we got he, Jake Paul on. there. James O'Keefe is in a top ten, he's no doubt at this list. point. He's on that. Yeah, and Pat, here's he's my here, here, guys, you guys a question in regards to that video where you put. By that the way, guy, that the, the text we just sent, the yeah. event's about to sell out. I so know. If, I mean, if it I knew sells that. out, this is why you wanted to be on the cr- uh, text list. If the event's um, about to sell out, Kai and uh, uh, what's Marty the just date of it? Text message. It's going to be February twenty third. February twenty third. But keep going. Go ahead. No, you no, were saying. Talk Pat. So, so, it, so, Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, they exposed that guy. I mean, they've been exposing people left and right for that's that's their thing, right? So they get this guy. Then the video on YouTube. Why does YouTube take it down? Because it was COVID misinformation. 
I don't know, because you know YouTube took down that video. The video had how many millions of views. They well, we'll take... find out tomorrow. No, I, I, yeah, no, exactly. And then, we'll find but, out but, but here's the Pat. Pat, when you see stuff like that, when you see pe- people getting silenced, what happened to America's like our anger, our things where we like go in the streets? Like when you see stuff in Brazil, those people when they're pissed, bro, they go into the freaking streets. When you see Iran, they're in the streets. What happened to us? What happened to America? It's Americans where like you see something like it's in your face. Pfizer, the government, all these people are, are all together to just screw us when it comes to our health and all this. Nobody he makes this video and he's like, it's in your face. Guys, they're collu- they're tech- really colluding all this shit with Pfizer and the government and the the, the, the uh, and nothing happens. Well, you know, you 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 have to know there's a many more people who feel the same way as you do. But they don't know what to do. Okay, <laughs> they don't know what to do. If this video got 25 million views, yeah. there's 25 million people interested in a story like that. That are, it's not 25 million views. It's how many people share it so like Jesus, this and watch yeah. it with five people, yeah. six people who shared it on so, some other. Yeah, person. so yeah. really, 25 million is probably a hundred million people that saw this. So impact's being made, and he's making people's life harder. But we'll see what's going to happen there. Let's go to you. Let's go to uh, Chat GPT. I know you got yeah. some thoughts on that right there. Yeah. So, uh, Chad, uh, GBT, and AI-driven investment fund powered by IBM Watson Supercomputers quietly beating the market by nearly 100%. And Chad, GBT banned by New York University to prevent plagiarism. And then there's another story that just came out about teachers rejoice. Chad, GBT creators have released a tool to help detect AI-generated writing. This is an insider story specifically for parents. And here's what it is. Since its launch, ChatGPT has caused shockwaves in many industries due to its skilled writing and coding abilities. The bot has already accomplished several impressive feats, including passing the U.S. medical licensing exam, a Wharton MBA exam, and four law school courses. However, ChatGPT has also caused handwriting among teachers and other education professionals who say the bot will help students get better at cheating and plagiarism. On Tuesday, the company launched a web-based program called AI Text classifier to tackle the issue the program will f- uh, flag paste it in text uh, with the following labels very unlikely unlikely unclear if it is possibly or likely ai generated anyways so th- this is to help with the teachers but again what are you going to do with that there's very likely that you did that or unlikely it's going to be kind of weird but what are your thoughts with what's going on with chat gbt I, right I now i think with chat gbt pat just with automation in in, in general it, it scares the hell out of me because it's slowly but surely like, like Amazon's laying off thousands, Microsoft's laying off thousands, McDonald's laying off thousands. It's going to eliminate half the workforce. Robots are going to take over. So if you're in high school or your kids are in high school, you better have them learn a trade that a robot can't steal from them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Doctors, uh, you're fine. Engineers, you're going to be good. But if it's something a robot's doing, bro, you better find something, your niche, that's different. Like, thank God we're in the entertainment world. I mean, until a robot can make people laugh and write, and act, which will be, I'll be dead by then, figure out something. because, And I think it's scary, Pat. All those people are going to be losing all those jobs. They're going to be trying to look for food and it's poverty. It's going to be in the next 20 years, bro. It's going to be scary as shit because they're taking over the jobs that all these people are like, ah, they're not really trying to upgrade and get better because now it's a really big shift because I don't remember, Pat, I remember as a kid, this is how old I am, I was watching TV and I would see www. That's when the website, the internet started. I was like, what the hell? Why are they putting it on everything? And then now look where we are. Right now is that age for that robotic chat GBT and all this. My Our friend Mike, Mike that works here showed me this and it's, what it's doing, it's mind-boggling. So you better tell your kids, tell yourself, figure out something that an iRobot type of machine can't can't take over because it's coming, and it's coming fast. It's scary. Yeah. I mean, look, there's a a camp that is part of your camp that's afraid what's going to happen in the future that a lot of jobs are going to be stolen Mm -hmm. and taken, and there's a camp that thinks this is going to create new jobs and we're going to have to learn new skill sets. There's an article that came out from Harvard Business Review that said anybody you hire today within 18 months has to learn 10 new skill sets, meaning things are changing. So, Rob, you're typing your mic. Yeah. So every yeah, there it is. Uh, uh, no, that's not the one. There's another article that says uh, executives. It's something about executives that executives have to learn 10 new skill sets every 18 months. Jesus. Whoever you hire today doesn't yet have the skill sets for the job that's going to be needed in 18 months. Wow. So that's just the the only problem today is going to be the following. Here's a problem. Those who take their time to learn a thing that we have to learn today will be left behind. 
your your ability to adapt and learn quickly if you don't you will pay a price for it that is the only thing those folks will pay a price a lot of changes are coming and it's constant and it ain't slowing down so uh, but we're going to see what's going to happen mm-hmm. go ahead you look like yeah no i something. just uh, th- there's the uh, i'm not even sure if vinny's in that camp but he kind of ma- it pled his case for that camp i'm in the other camp um, the market will figure out what the market will do. I mean, I, I think you know, that camp that Vinny's kind of describing is the Andrew Yang camp. Go- technology's taking our jobs. We're going to need UBI. We're going to need to print money. People stay home. You got to work because technology's taking your job. If there's anything we learned during COVID is that just printing free money and paying people to stay home doesn't exactly work well. I think uh, much like how the internet people kind of were saying this in 2000, Y2K, the internet's taking our jobs. We don't need it. It's like, well, things are fine. I think uh, capitalism, free enterprise, um, inventing, reinventing, reinventing yourself, pivoting. A wise man once said, outwork, outimprove, outstrategize, outlast. The market's going to be changing. And I think it's your job to improve, get better, learn new skill sets, and utilize technology to help you improve rather than being scared of technology. So, you know, I'm utilizing chat, GPT, just. Mm-hmm. to come up with copywriting and to come up with ideas or titles. And I'm using that to my advantage. I'm not worried that they're taking jobs necessarily. So you, you, just you know, keep improving. You know, it's, it's amazing uh, you said that. Years ago, a guy told me, because I used to love shining my shoes. Mm-hmm. Me too. And I used to love ironing my clothes. I mean, I love ironing clothes. and you know, Starch? You starch, starch them up? I love it. You yeah. know the main starch? I love and it. Cheap one. <laughs> I, I used to love it, right? And one guy says, you know, that's a $10 an hour job you're doing right there. Mm-hmm. How do you expect to make millions and you're doing $10 an hour job, right? What ChatGBT does is it just showed you that job that used to be worth $55,000 is no longer a $55,000 job. Now somebody else can do it. No different than somebody that does your shoes or your suit or your haircuts how come you don't learn how to cut your own hair how come you don't know how to, mm-hmm. because somebody else can do that this is not an insult that is a job that someone else can do yes and there are many jobs that others were doing that technology is going to start doing go ahead tom yeah i see three things I, first of all i agree with you 100 percent uh there's three things i see on chat gpt first of all it's plagiarism second of all is jobs and third is new frontier under plagiarism you know this is always comes around but it always gets solved i'll give you an example Teachers were concerned about Wikipedia. Oh, kids can just go on the internet, take the mouse, yep. cut and paste all the stuff, and make a little term paper up by putting their own voice on it and then editing a little bit. That was true. Well, guess what? Capitalism struck. Entrepreneurs struck. Chegg, C-H-E-G-G dot com, and DupliChecker are used by teachers in schools all over the place. And I require you to send in your, uh, your term paper digitally they run it through check check comes back yeah this is plagiarized this is plagiarized this is here here it's very effective and guess what it's resulted in because of the presence of the capitalist tool giving teachers the ability to check guess what they did use wikipedia they put in the bibliography as a source but they're still writing their term papers the same thing is happening now they're going to put tools together to say hey you know what this is it this is this is ai generation and this is how it it how it how it happens and so plagiarism. And the BizDoc babe tells me all about this. She says, tools always show up to help the teachers because the schools mm-hmm. is the most concerned about it. The second thing is jobs. It's just changing. There, are, Look, there are robots that are welding together cars now. And all the scare and everything, oh, this is going to eliminate factory workers. UAW is going to lose workers. Well, guess what? It, it Those workers are doing different things now. And there are robots putting that together. Oh, we want $15 an hour you know, minimum wage in New York. Suddenly McDonald's had kiosks apparently built by the same company that built Southwest Air Airlines kiosk. And by the way, the kiosk showed up at airports and there was less workers at the desk to do anything other than take your bags. It's just a rotation of the economy. Mm -hmm. The jobs, it's just a rotation. The tide comes in, the tide comes out. And in terms of new frontiers, Pat's right. A $55,000 a year for, you know, a marketing person writing copy suddenly becomes, you know, maybe a $70,000 a year of somebody managing and using ChatGPT yeah. to write it. And so I, I think this is just another example. A technology comes up, there's fear, but then there's acceptance and utilization and understanding that it all keeps working forward. Personally, 
you know, I want things to keep growing toward the future because we talked at the beginning of this about has the first person been born that will live to 150 years? Why is that? Because of medicine, because of research, because of the time in which we live, not because that they could get a toothache in 1915 that could go septic and kill them, right? This is all part of the, the wave of how technology actually makes life better. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Go do something with it. By the way, let's just go into that. Can I, I just I, comment on one, one thing Todd said, uh, Tom said, because I fully agree with what you're saying. And and sometimes the wisdom of Tom does gets overlooked because he talks so fast and like I just got so much stuff and I wrote down some notes. Here's what I'm saying to you. You said sometimes the tide comes in, the tide comes out. Just like, you know, what goes up must come down. Here's what I'll tell you. The, the return of old school is kind of happening when all this technology you're presented with, what are the, in school, now they're going to make you do handwritten essays. No longer digital stuff. You have to do it. Okay, dating apps. We've realized, all right, that's great. But you know what's even better? Meeting up in real life. Yeah. What's crazy? Bitcoin. It's a digital crypto. It's like, you know what's better? Cash. <laughs> so like this this reset, just kind of the tide going out, tide coming back in, I think is fully an, a, a great example that Todd I, that's I, I agree. Old School was a great movie, and that was a very... <laughs> you know, what she so he's the right. wisdom. So now he's the wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do me a favor. Earmuffs right. real quick, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I'll tell you, so, vinyl sounds pretty good. Has, I like has, contracts. Has first person to live to be 150 years old been born? This is a Harvard Gazette story. David Sinclair, scientist and aging expert and director of Harvard Medical School's Paul F. Uh, Glenn Center for Biology of Aging Research, was asked about his previous statement on the possibility of someone living to 150. He responded by saying, over the last 20 years, there have been a number of molecules that have been found to... Um, is that really the word he says? Do you see the word? To, uh, uh, what page are we on? Right there, over the past to the, the uh, Is that the article right there well, that you have? Yes. Over That's the past 20 years, there's been a... How do you pronounce retard. that word? Retard. retard. Is that really retard. a word to I, I, say the aging process? It's a scientific really? term. Retard. That's yeah. weird. You, yeah. It's a slow. You, you don't use it... Okay, I'm going to say it. In psychology, you would say retard, which is bad, and especially if you're yeah. using it at somebody, if you're not using it in a clinical sense. Canceled. The other <laughs> word... No, the other word is retard. Like, retard, it's growth. Retard. So, retard. Yeah, yeah, like got a flame it. So, retardant. Yeah. That's so exactly like, right. He was a retard. He was a retard. Like, uh, like uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we aging process, at least in animals and hangover. potentially a couple of okay. drugs that aren't humans. That made me optimistic that somebody who might make it to 150 has already been born. In this chapter, we're shown at the possibility to reset the age of the body up to as much as 50 percent. Uh, uh, we can reverse aging in other issues, tissues. As well, if you can reset the age of the body multiple times, I think it would be dangerous to set an upper limit. I think it's inevitable. He concluded with these technologies are developing now and the speed of development is getting faster and faster. So I don't think it's far away that people will live up to 150 years old. And I'll finish up with the story because they go kind of together. From Jeff Bezos to Jack Dorsey, here's 14 world's wealthiest entrepreneurs trying to crack the code of living forever, Okay. Peter Thiel, Larry Ellison, Larry Page, Sergey uh, Sergey Brin, Mark Zuckerberg, Sean Parker, Dorsey Bezos, Yuri Milner, Dmitry Itzakov, David Murdoch, Robert G. Miller, Brian Johnson, and Wojciechowski. All of these guys are trying to. So, 150 years old, Tom. 150 years old. First of all, I know you're dealing with an anti-aging company right now. The project. Don't don't say don't anything say until it. you finalize yeah, you it. You told me I was shocked to even. I don't. Need, I, the fact that you're willing to be tested for it, I applaud you. you. you I wouldn't have done it. You saw, me, but you saw, you you're the one that sent me the article I'm that said that. I said I said it's up to, but it's you got to risk it. I'm not going to tell you to risk it. You okay. got to decide whether you want to take that risk. And it's I know you're still thinking aging. about it's, it's reverse, reverse aging, 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 but we'll see what happens. Okay, Tom. Would you want to live to 150 years old? Um, no. <laughs> Why? I think people are going to want to tap out of this life long before that um, with, with a lot that's going on. No, no. Would I, would I like to live? You know what? You know, I'll live the years that God gives me. And if it turns out I'm born into a time that I'll live to 150, I want to do as much as I can with each moment. Uh, you've already heard me say, I personally don't want to retire. You know, I want to teach. I want to keep working. I have no desire to get a metal detector and walk up and down the beach looking for somebody else's wedding <laughs> ring. You know? <laughs> what a know? visual. What a visual. What a visual. Well, we're, we live in South Florida, so you Makes can sense. kind of see a couple of those guys. Yeah, out there. I love them. Hey, Patrick, I found a watch today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, I gotta go. <laughs> Adam, 150, would you want to live up to 150? I think uh, hey, you know, let's see. life is precious, 
And I think, you know, the longer you live, I, like I have a goal. I want to get to 100. That's just me. You know, 150, God bless. I think, I don't remember who it was. I don't know if it was Neil deGrasse Tyson or who it was exactly. And they said, the problem with wanting to live that long is that, uh, you know, procrastination is the killer of success. And if you know that you're going to have a long life and you've got 150 years to get stuff done, you'll sleep in a little bit longer. You'll hit that snooze button. Antonio Robbins, I think, mm -hmm. gave an amazing speech yeah. about this. Like, stop chasing stop your dreams. Stay chasing in your bed. Dreams. Stay in your lane and yeah. take a nap. So I think, you know, if you are going to live that old, that you, 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 you'll kind of not have motivation if, and procrastination will if take I'm going to look like that Pat there's no <laughs> way in hell but, I want to live to be 100 that's, that's, that's 100 118 that's, so imagine another wow. 32 Dude, years on top 150 what's up with the guy in top not, left he but, looks like he's doing brother, great you're, you're not what's up with that guy he's killing it people are that bringing guy. you play. you realize that Pat that one, guy was 146 so yeah. he claimed to be 146 is that a bullet uh, in he, his mouth or what, <laughs> is that a tooth what is that oh look he got his first tooth it's a bullet as a tooth yeah Here's my thing, Pat. And at that age, uh, at that age, I mean, unless you're very tan, keeping though. up the great, oh, right. very tan. But like, you're now a burden on other people because you're not going anywhere by yourself. People are carrying you, and you're an ordeal mm. now. They're like, hey, Pat, <laughs> oh Pat's coming. Yeah, get the chair, get the IV, get the yeah, shut, the, cut the blind. Can I ask no. you something? Yeah. Okay. God comes to you. Yeah. You're 75 years old. <clears throat> Says, Vinny. Yes, God. You're 75. Mm -hmm. Yep. You finally have really retired because you, what, Social Security wasn't 65. It was 75. Can you do this in James Earl Jones' uh, <laughs> voice? Okay. Just to be, yeah. Vinny. Vinny. Yeah. This is God. Yes. Yeah, God. Well done. You've Thank lived 75 years and now they've let you retire in Social Security. Thank you. I'm giving you another 75 just to think about the first 75. I don't want that, God. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm actually good, God. <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna, I don't know. I I, I don't know. Just, All right, just come uh, up you, Yes, no, 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 Would you or not? No, no hell no. I'm good. I'm good. If I uh, up to a hundred. Hey, listen. If I'm a burden on others, hell. That's no. exactly it. Hell no. Yeah. Bro, I don't like people knowing that I'm no. in the bathroom doing yeah. my thing. No, now no, I have no. to do it in front of people. I have to listen. I don't want to look like that. That guy looks like a White yeah. Walker from freaking <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm good. I'll say this. I think the saddest thing that anyone can experience is like your children dying before you oh, yeah. Yeah. or your grandkids. And that's something I get we're living in like fantasy land right here. But to, yeah. for everyone you know that you've yeah. ever known and loved to die and yeah. then their kids all die because you live another nah, I'm good. Yeah, that, could get, good. that could get aggressive I'm listen no, it uh, is if you really want to know what it feels like go watch the movie Age of Adeline okay go watch the movie by the way did speaking of movies I saw the judge I was going to send you a photo tell me let me explain something to you I hated you for it because whatever song they picked for that goddamn movie I was like I was making food and I was just like Bon Iver I was crying it was such a no, good song, because it, uh, it's a uh, it. what's yeah. his name, Iron Man, uh, Robert, Robert, Robert Downey Jr., Jr. Robert Duvall, the father, the relationship when they're in the bathroom when he has to take care. Did you watch? Dude, it it's, made uh, me cry, and I was mad it? at him because it, the Judge was a great I'm, movie. It was a great movie. You you think I'm joking? It is I'm gonna be watching it on the plane ride this weekend. I've scheduled it with Where my girl. Going? Like we are. Where you guys I, going? Can I come? We're going uh, skiing. Okay. okay. Very Jackson very Hole. emotional. Very very good. emotional. Very good okay. It All right. Awesome. Sounds good. So by the way, yeah, Rob, make a note. Zero podcasts for Adam. Wow, that's Until right. Adam. So tomorrow, James O'Keefe, you're not on. You're going to be so on tomorrow with if James O'Keefe comes. Perfect. You got to. You, you got to give me time you, to watch the movie. I gave you gave two, two weeks, weeks since really? Brian Callen. No, I paid okay? for it. Okay. I so saw tomorrow it. it's going to be us. What happens if I don't watch the movie for a month? No problem, dude. Okay. I, we get a break from you. <laughs> I get a break from okay. <laughs> We don't have a problem. That's a decision you got to make. We should talk out. about this story. All right, about, let's go to the tipping story. We're going to go to the tipping about how story. high earning men are cutting back on their work. And we want you to to spend more time by yourself and enjoy your become spend time with your intrapersonal. Okay. All right, so let's go to the story. When should you leave a tip? American sound off on cultural pressure. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. Such terrible pressure people are having right now. If you enjoy eating gout, then you could be feeling uh, growing cultural pressures around one of the service industry's most controversial topics, tipping. Tipping at quick service and to-go establishments is frustrating, creates a social pressure, saying nursing 
students and CNA Addison Reed. Day trader Sean McDonald and Reed expressed frustration at the expectation to tip for drive through or to-go services and say they run into the issues frequently. Reed says she tips 15% on average for quick food services and feels obligated to tip when the worker is standing there watching her. McDonald says he would tip for good quality service but express concern about whether the gratuity goes to the server, the store owner, or corporate. McDonald's suggested businesses include fine print on their tipping uh, prompt specifying where the tip goes. So, Adam, I'm going to go to you first. Thoughts on tips? I mean, it's nothing's more awkward than just ordering some food. <laughs> it's, you know, you go to Chicken Kitchen across the street. It's 11, uh, 12 bucks for your meal. And then they hit you with, how much do you want to leave as a tip? Oh, God, Two, no. three, oh, four, that. five. It's like... <laughs> Okay, now I'm face to face with the lady. She's like looking at you, like, so what you gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna give me three extra dollars for giving you your foot. It's like, now it's I'm, awkward. I'm right gonna, now. I'm gonna assume, yeah. I'm gonna guess that she's Latina. Yeah, that with girl. that voice I just okay. did right there. But, but they, I, and I, I hate that. By the way, I hate awkward moments. They should have like, like you know, in voting, you go in that little thing. Give me like a tip room. Why go in there? Don't just stand there and make it. Weird, yeah. Well, they, yeah. How much you gonna tip me? Huh? Yeah, how much? I'm like, can you? I just turn handed around? you your food. Yeah, can you turn around, please? Like, this is awkward. You yeah, know what I mean, like, it's. I, yeah, if I they're using like, this, if they're using the system by square or toast, they just turn they the turn iPad it. around you, yeah. and then they point. Uh, yeah, just right there. Yeah, and, they, and they're staring at you. So, um, I'm not gonna name the name of it, but <laughs> we take the girls and we love to go out to. Um, it's a very place. creative dessert place that uh, makes you know. Frozen yogurt, and they use nitrogen. Big yeah, I scene. got you. It's real fun. And I asked one time, I said, hey, if I tip here, where does this go? And the girl there says, oh, I don't know. Oh, great. And so obviously it doesn't go to me because otherwise she would cheerfully say, oh, it goes to us. We split it. Whoever's on shift, we split it. Mm -hmm. um, like if you ever had, uh, you ask a valet, do I tip you? Oh, just put it on the thing. We split got it. Got you. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, and so I'm... I'm not on the tip thing on the, the retail cash register. If I'm just buying something and you're handing it to me, we didn't have tips for many, many years, and I'm not convinced that the, the core workers are getting it. If I know the worker's getting it yep. and they've done something nice, I will take care of that person. I agree. I agree 100%. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm with them. And I, mind you, I, I tip really, really well, and I don't even have money like that. Because I, I know I'm being dead. Pat, like, I tip to where sometimes they walk away and they go, are you? And I'm being dead serious. Like, I went to go eat with Kelly. I tip them. I even ask. I go, how much could I feel bad if I go under? But the the, the fact that the girl just stays there, I, I, I'm i at the point in my life, I'm 44, I go, excuse me, can you just at least look over there? It's just awkward because I'm putting it and then you're sitting there looking at it. It makes me feel, it makes me feel. Really you give weird. the old look over there and then like you I reach go, in and you grab the tip exactly. out again. Exactly. I go fire. And then I just. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Mac told a joke about her looking at him. Do you know this no, joke? No, no, tell me, tell me. It's a dirty me. joke. It's a freaking oh, awesome joke. Here you go. Here it comes. It's, I can't say oh, it. Okay. Okay. It's a right. tell me, tell remind me afterwards. Okay, I'll tell okay. you. Bernie Mac is my guy, but. Okay. Uh, uh, well, God well, bless well, her soul. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> two year old. She the shepherd for the devil. <laughs> you know, whatever she says, the other two motherfuckers do. <laughs> you tell the story him about your uncle that doesn't even stairs. speak English. And him downstairs. What do you mean, him downstairs? Him downstairs. Yeah, <laughs> two, four, <laughs> six year old. Bernie was good. Shepherd for the devil. <laughs> so what, what's his What's his joke with the tip though? <laughs> shepherd. Like the shepherd. <laughs> She's hurting everybody. <laughs> Oh, anyway, what's the joke with the tip? He'll tell us after. Bernie Mac. Dirty. Dirty. Oh, okay. So anyways, so uh, uh, tipping. Um, yeah, if the money doesn't go to them, I don't uh, uh, over tip. If the money is like a pool, like if they do a pool tip, I don't like that. Like, you know, sometimes valet, they'll do a pool tip. I'm like, yeah, can I give it to you? No, it's going to go to pool. Okay, so here's 20 bucks. I was going to give you 100 bucks, but here's 20 bucks. Hey, where's this going to go? This is going to go to me. Fantastic. So here's a tip that goes to you. Now. If service is bad, will you tip zero? Say you go to a restaurant. It is absolutely horrible, Tom. Insult, late, annoying, nothing they do is right. Absolutely horrible. Will you tip zero? Yes, I will if it is 100% on the server. But if the kitchen was slow, there's other things there, and they've got like seven tables and they're running around, and they didn't have enough people there. Very good feedback. Then I cut some slack. But if I know it's just that person, their attitude. Forgot the is, order, put in the wrong order, you know, just... Or, you know, the, the 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 one I hate is the appetizers comes out, and 13 seconds later, somebody else comes out of the kitchen with the dinner. And I'm like... 
I didn't I ask you just to appetize us and give us a little time? Yeah. Uh, and that's all on the server. You, you, oh, are you ready for this, Pat? Yeah. So me and, me and Kelly yesterday went to go eat ramen. That one, yeah. It's a really good spot, right? Normally when you walk in, there's one one of the waitresses. Hi, she's welcoming time. She's sit, it's an experience. She's awesome, right? This girl, I could already tell from the beginning. We sat there. Me and Kelly are chilling. And then, Pat, Pat nothing is... I had to I had to walk to a table get the menu I brought the menu we're looking mm-hmm. through it I order an appetizer we order the meal uh, I I got Arnold Palmer we like it's we like it the same way I go little iced tea that she shows up it's all lemonade she goes I trust me I put iced tea she didn't I asked for iced tea on the side should, our our ramen comes no appetizer I don't say anything and then all, all this it was just the worst she was young or whatever. I still, I even ask, I, I go tell you, Kelly, how much? And we even put even more than, it, unless they no. do something personal to me, like, hey, but, and I told her, I go, Good no, we you. don't want it. I still feel bad, well, unless they're an asshole guys, or, or a bitch. All I'm saying to you is DM Vinny to come to your restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Because whether you give shitty service or not, he's going to tip you. I feel bad Good for the for person because she was You're young. You're such she a socialist young. at restaurant. I'll, I'll add one more thing. <laughs> Tom, when you, when you give the zero tip, do you give any insight or any uh, encouragement to the server meaning like i've been a server before and i uh, i think server is actually a great job if you want to do anything in sales you're out there you're working you have a system you got to you know meet you're with closing, people you're, closing. you're you know yeah. you're upselling it's such yeah. a great job to kind of to understand people and, and social dynamics but if there's a, someone who's a shitty server the last thing i'll do is just tip them nothing and be like and because that's gonna uh, these fucking people they yeah. don't t- it's like i'll say hey listen I'm a 20% guy across the board. Decent service, great service, 20% unless unless there's something extra. Mm-hmm. I would say, hey, listen, I'm a 20% tip guy. Sorry to let you know you did not deserve meet the, uh, standards. Meet the standard. But I'm going to tip you, So, and I don't want you to feel like things are, you know, that you didn't do your job. But the next time I come here, the next customer, just understand that they're probably not going to tip you like this because your service was pretty poor. Here's some money. It's eight bucks, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, keep improving. I, li- I actually like that a lot more. I just hate those awkward moments. You guys are very noble. I, yeah, may, if- I may write something. I may write, like, something simple that says, like, I don't know what's going on. What's up? I mean, no, I'll say that. I don't know what's up, but the service was non-existent. <laughs> oh, you're going to write the note. I love I'll, it. He's I'll, leaving I'll a tip. Do you have tip. a pen on you or do you ask them for a pen? Well, no, I'll, I'll use... <laughs> No, if they've given me a no, pen. because nothing's more awkward. Hey, can I buy a pen? No, 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 Here's no, a little no, note no, for no, you. No, no, no. I mean, th- there's you a ain't pen. shit. They, no, they bring your credit card back with the with the slip. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The by, pen by the way, if, if, I don't. I'm not mean. I don't just say it's unfortunate your mom was pro-life. You know it's what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> I'm taking a stand. <laughs> well, she's just, she's just, you see her head come up like, who the hell was that? By the way, if you want to hear real stories with restaurants, oh Mario Moral Tikrin will tell you plenty of stories of what happens with restaurants. I've oh walked God. in, hostess was bad, I'll walk at him. Beautiful. Uh, waitress is bad, you know, or wait, waiter is bad, you know, we'll have the conversation. But the best thing to do is the following here's what you don't, here's what we don't do enough of. If the waiter or the waitress is great, I always do this. I love doing this. I'll say, um, can I talk to your manager, please? And they'll always say, oh, God. is everything fine? Yeah. And I'll, I'll say it in a very serious tone. It's fine, but I need to speak with your manager immediately. <laughs> and then they walk away and they're like, oh, f- like what happened? I, we, and they'll say, is there anything I can do? I'm telling you. I need to speak with the manager. Is it the food? Is there anything I can do? So then the manager will show up, and you see them watching from a distance on what we're saying to the manager. They say, what's your name? Johnny. Johnny, how long have you been the manager here? Three years. I got to tell you, Johnny, I don't know what you do here. Hmm. I have no idea what you do with your guys. But our waitress was absolutely amazing. <laughs> He's a sweaty she, too, probably. Yeah. She was phenomenal, kind, respectful, on time. The iced tea, lemonade, Arnold Palmer, 90-10, flawless. Perfect. She brought the balsamic glaze. She brought the honey, uh, uh, asking if we'd like more three refills. She wasn't just bringing one refill and walking away and not coming back up. She's a perfect. So whatever service you guys got, fantastic. Please make sure she knows about it. I want to make sure you knew about it. She's amazing. You guys are lucky to have her. That's amazing. And then they come back, the waitress. Yeah. And by the way, every, like eight out of ten times when you say this, they bring you free dessert or you bring you something, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, that happens. It. We got this. Don't worry about this. We got that. But, you know, I think if you're going to give the negative feedback, you also have Reward. to give the positive feedback if they crush it. I agree. Well they crush it, 
Give him the wall. I agree. Phenomenal Pat, job. Pat, the place, the Casa D'Angelo, I don't know if you ever yeah. heard. I know, have you heard of the place? I've never been to before, it's but it's a nice place. Real, it's like the house <laughs> of yeah. Angelo. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They actually have a balsamic uh, glaze that's on the Get table. Get out of here. It's actually weird because I think it's a picture of you on it. Okay. That's a picture of <laughs> But Pat, like those servers, those servers Beast. are yeah. the epitome of what you just said. Every single time I've gone there with you and your family or, 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 or Tom, we've been there, all of us. Yeah. They are on it. The iced tea. The, because good because of Michel. Michel's because the- of Michel. M- Michel is unfreaking bull. If I, if Mikel is the kind of guy, if I ever was in a restaurant business, I would want Mikel on my restaurant, and I would pay him twice the salary he's getting paid right now. Wow. Which one's Mikel? Is that the, the tall Mikel's guy? Mikel's a tall Italian yeah. guy who's just, when he talks about how much he misses Italy, his family, he talks about his wife, he talks about, he's just the kind of guy that you want to be taken care of. By like a guy like that, got gotcha. you. Phenomenal. Yes, the, 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 we went to the uh, Angelos on Monday or whatever it was, a couple yeah. days ago, right? Somebody sitting at our table. Adam's confused, <laughs> so we go sit in the table all the way in the back. So then Adam comes in, and this guy he says, "But let me tell you what mistake just we just made." Have, right? So what happened? He says those guys are sitting there because they said they're here to see somebody, and they own the club eleven, and we figured they're here it's to sit with you, you. guys. Yeah. That's so hilarious. you always have people that come in. I want to see you, so we put him at your table. We thought he's your friend. <laughs> He says, what do you want us to do? So, I so. said, well, you can't ask him to leave. Anyway, so Adam goes, do you guys know those guys are the owners of 11? There's, I know them from the company. Like, anyways, long That's story. So yeah. But you know what happened? Nutella pizza. You get uh, ice cream. You yeah. get this. Yeah, yeah. You get espresso. You get yeah. that. And Adam, and, Adam yeah. and Tom are talking about how he was you know, uh, uh, apologizing on my behalf, and they're just having this Stop. great conversation yeah. together. <laughs> it's just a fantastic. Yeah, I, what I will say is, by the way, it was so awkward because I walked in. And you knew the guys. It's at Pat's table. He's always said that we sit. Yeah. I go, I, I know these. What are the odds I know these? Yeah, weird. They Randall. run 11 in Miami. Yeah. Shout out to you guys. Um, so I go, I say, hey, it was just awkward. Pat? But Pat is, what I know about Pat, is Pat is a be back. I'll be back. At, at he, Pat, whether it, was in, whether it was in Dallas, you had two restaurants. It was Yard House with our friend Jason or Toulouse. Was, what was her, her name? Martin. 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 It's like, that's like... Pat's there. Two Not restaurants. Sure. He's he's Boom. a back in in Boca when we were there. We were either at uh, the not the yard house. It was the other house. Something. Um, Gary Rack's farmhouse. Ra- yeah, farmhouse. Oh, wow. we were eating there, or we were at uh, Louis uh, <laughs> Louis Bossy, and then here, obviously Angelos and or the other Angelos. Well, now we have but, to change apparently. Yeah, apparently. Dude, but so you're the type of guy that once something's good and it works and they treat you right. You'll be back. So you know, you know, these guys are working at the uh, the club that we're building. That when people come mm-hmm. to the first po- live podcast that we do, we're building a cigar lounge in the back. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the three tickets that we have, the one that they're going to go to the cigar lounge, the premiere, those two sold out already. There's nothing left there. There's only the general tickets left to send them back. So when we announce, so I, the, do I have to buy it now? Do I yeah. Have to go but, on? But, but, but let me just tell you the story. Yeah. So the guys that are doing our uh, uh, real estate stuff, or they're doing our construction stuff, they've done a bunch of things here. They've done a bunch of things at different buildings. I'm talking to them. I said, listen, guys. If you're good to us, I don't change relationship. I stick with partners that we do business with. 24-7, they're working at the office to build a cigar lounge in the back, the club. 24-7, they're working at the, the club. The cigar lounge is looking insane. The humidor, what we're going to do, the structure of the cigar lounge is going to be fantastic. Anyways. Um, What's crazy is that it's three weeks away. Yeah, we're getting That's bananas. <laughs> we're getting to the end, and we're gonna we're gonna watch the Super Bowl there as well, and have a dominant all this other stuff. But let me do let's do one or two more stories, and then we'll wrap it up, and I'll give the link, and uh, we uh, shall go from there. What story do you guys want to go into that we haven't gone into yet? What how story? About, how about do we, Alec we can Baldwin? Talk, we okay, can let's talk do Alec Tate? Baldwin. How, let's oh, do Alec Baldwin. We got Alec Baldwin. Dude, we got we got the, are you, the Tyree are, Nichols. Adam, we got you okay if we don't do Tyree Nichols and we go to Alec Baldwin? Let's go. Let's go to Alec Baldwin. We, I was going to say Alec we Baldwin. could too. But another let's go another to Alec layup Baldwin. for Hunter Biden. Yeah, yeah, let's go to Alec Baldwin. So here's what happens with Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin accused of extremely reckless acts and rust killing. Alec Baldwin and the former. Uh, armor on the film Russ has been charged with involuntary manslaughter and the fatal shooting of the film cinematographer, according to court papers filed in the first uh, judicial district court in New Mexico. Prosecutors accused Baldwin of not uh, receiving sufficient firearm training, failing to handle safety co- uh, complaints, putting his finger on the trigger of a real firearm instead of a replica, and pointing the firearm at the cinematographer and director. Armorer Hannah Gutierrez Reed was accused of not checking the rounds she located, loaded the firearms into, allowing the rounds of the set, uh, on the set allowing ammunition to not be secured, failing to stay with the firearm and not being qualified 
for the armor position. Baldwin has long maintained he is not responsible for the fatal shooting. Prosecutors told Baldwin was culpable for not checking. He was also culpable for not checking the gun or ensuring someone else did and for not attending firearm safety training. Uh, uh, Vinny. So, and, and, and but mind you, um, I was always a fan of Alec Baldwin from Hunter Red October and just all the movies and everything, but this guy showed his true colors um, even before Trump, but then during like all the incidents that he got into in front of his house in Manhattan with all the, you know, yelling at, you know, try to yell and like get confrontational with women to all that stuff. This is just a, 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 a prime case of just the narcissist and the hypocrite. This guy went after the NRA talking all this crap about guns and nobody, you know, all these people that are having guns. Bro, the number one rule with guns is what you guys know, right? Always treat it as if it's loaded, One, 100%. Mm -hmm. He would have known this if he went to the training, because by the way, uh, he didn't show up, okay, to, to the actual required firearm training, which, you know, Mr. Mr. Hypocrite guy. When he showed up, he was distracted, talking on his cell phone, prosecutor say, there's a photo of him, Pat, finger on the trigger, Acting like you know, like a like a moron, like like trying to point at people and stuff. And like I said, if he knew, if he went to the training, that's the problem with all these people that are anti-gun and stuff that hate guns. Tom, if you're trained on it, less accidents like this happen. God forbid, and God rest the souls of the people that passed away. But it's always the the pot calling the kettle black. All the all the ones that bark and oh, look at this, look at that. Like you're the ones that are actually the idiots. You know what I mean? Like he's he's the moron. And if he paid attention and actually did the training, which I think the majority of Americans should have some basic training because if, God forbid, you have to have a gun in your hand, none of this type of shit would happen. Uh, this has been going on for a long time, and so the prosecutors had a time to talk to everybody. And some of this language that I see from the prosecutor, we're in the insurance industry. Um, there are three of us here. Adam, you are. Pat, you are. Does some of this language look kind of like the thing that uh, an adjuster or loss control would be saying? Because remember, there's insurance on that set that's going to have to cover of course. The, the loss that's going to cover the loss of life. There's insurance on there to cover lawsuits for injuries on set. It's There's huge. You know, we have insurance. When Value Team, it goes off and does a, a field shoot. We have insurance certificate. Not attending firearm safety training. You know, failing to handle safety complaints. And, you know, all of this to me sounds like there's an investigation that's done here. And what happened on that set was a terrible accident and tragedy. And it can be an accident and a tragedy, but it doesn't take away from the place. It doesn't look like that they did the appropriate, um, you know, safety routine. And if you've ever gone and had gun training, and I have, when you're sitting, standing there side by side with someone who's teaching you about maybe a pistol you're thinking of buying, and you go to a firing range, they always say, down and away, down and away. Yeah. So you point it down and away, and he says, when I hand it to you, you look. And so he says, and he goes, and then he'll say, that's loaded, look. And so I look. And that's always what they teach you, so that when you receive a firearm, I mean, it's what they did in the military, Pat, right? Don't assume what the guy just told you is correct. Down and away and look. Oh. And I, I think, sorry, dude, Baldwin, if there's pictures of you fooling around there and you didn't do the safety training, you're culpable. It's a terrible tragedy. You can call it an accident, but you're culpable, dude. When you say culpable, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens here. Like, I don't think anybody thinks that he is going to be He's not, not going to go to jail. He, he, he didn't want to murder this person. Let's no, get real here. He, not. It was of not first, not. second, third degree murder. I don't yeah. know if manslaughter is going to be the charge. But I think we're losing sight. This lady lost her life, innocent lady. You know, why is the gun even loaded to begin with with real bullets? What the hell is that all about? And then his defense of, like, I didn't pull the trigger. It's like, I don't know how that works, yeah. uh, whatever that defense is. But... At the end of the day, this is a, a really sad situation. I think he's going to lose some sort of civil lawsuit, have to pay the family a ton of money. Mm -hmm. I don't see Alec Baldwin, A-list a -list Hollywood actor, going to jail oh, nothing. at all. No, definitely. No, no, no. So I think that's the bottom line. No, yeah, 100%. But it just goes it, it goes to show you, though, gun, like any gun on set. Because you mind yeah. you, and as being in Hollywood, being on a set, even when they would give you a gun out of it, and I'm an ex-military yeah. cop, always away never and dude i'm pretty sure every guy we all know this if you got a fake gun that you think is not loaded you're doing quick draw mcgraw you're acting like a cowboy yeah, and then not, boom and then you i mean cool. tragic but it could have been avoided to your point adam that's what i call it I said, it's a terrible tragedy and a tragedy that came out of an accident but it was an avoidable accident and on set you know the culpability goes to he's not going to go to jail but there's insurance here and there's you know, settlements and there's things like that, kind of the ugly side of this. And um, it doesn't it doesn't bring back a, a, a gifted filmmaker. It's unfortunate. Look, I, I don't I don't care if the, the person is, uh, 
uh, agrees with me, disagrees with me, we're on the same page, we're not on the same page, you're on the team, you're not on the team, nobody wants to see a story like this because an innocent person was killed mm -hmm. on the set and this guy's life is ruined. I mean, you know, Alec messed up his life for being arrogant, foolish, and uh, not being responsible for it. It's just something that... Uh, it happens to everybody, but there isn't anything that's a higher level than this. You that's took right. someone's life. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, how much of that responsibility is on him? How much of the responsibility on the other guy? Why the hell do you have a real weapon, a uh, loaded weapon on the set anyways? Like, as an actor, I'm assuming the actor's already thinking about doing their part, their role. Like, mm -hmm. what else? You want, you want me to also... so. I don't know, I, 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 maybe the funding, they didn't have enough funding for it, they were too cheap in that area that they didn't want to make that investment, who knows, but you're dealing with an A-lister. So, you know, anyways, what are you doing taking a movie? Like, I don't know what Alec Baldwin is worth. Why are you taking, how much money were they paying you to be on a set that's being cheap about it? There's so many questions yeah. I have, but it's not my job. It's the, it's the jury's and the judge's job to make that decision. Did they finish the movie, Pat? Do you know if they actually Can't went forward you. with the movie? First That's of all, imagine question. that movie. Oh, my this God. This is the movie. Would you want to go watch the movie? Like there, Maybe, you know, it's like one of those. Uh, I don't know, dude. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, the filming. Uh, uh, resume. Yeah, they, they're, okay. they're going to so resume. They're doing it. Yeah, they, dude, what an awkward. Because mind you, bro, if there's guns in that scene, there's guns throughout the whole damn movie. It's like a what's like I wouldn't I'd be like yeah. if nobody even touched this gun we're gonna put like a fake gun in your hand we don't want anybody pointing or doing anything well let's listen this is a uh, 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 you know, again we'll see what happened here at this point it's the chance like Adam says your chance of somebody like him and a list are going to jail not gonna like happen. Kevin Spacey you're seeing that stuff it's uh, yeah. probably not likely he'll have mm -hmm. to pay but we'll see what happens next but uh uh, it, 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 Rob, I think it's time for us to show the link to the website for those that want to go to the event. It is called wow. 5990 Live. 5990 Live, the premier, premium ticket and VIP sold out within the first 10 minutes. So those two are gone. There's only a few tickets left on the $100 tickets. And if you can zoom in a little bit, that shows what comes with that. Uh, you get the general seating. You get the swag gift is what you get with that one. But it's $100 to come in live and be with us. It'll be the first one. We're giving away some a bunch of things for people that are coming to the first one. It's going to be a really cool event uh, live. And some will see the Cigar Lounge. We can't wait to see. Uh, all, we'd love to see everybody. But obviously, that's not possible right now. But we are looking forward to seeing many of you there who are able to buy the tickets. Go to 5990live.com if you want to put it in chat. As well as comments, as well as description, uh, it's fifty nine ninety live. Uh, uh, let me just do. So this I have so to buy a general ticket. It. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's all that's left. That's Even if I'm you saying. wanted to buy anything else, you couldn't. But so, so Tom there, can't escort me to like the cigar lounge to check it. Tom out. can be your cigars. escort after hours for different reasons, okay. but for this <laughs> event, it's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> Anyways, so Jerome so Powell. so looking forward to seeing everybody who is getting registered. Uh, uh, there, uh, uh, hang on one second. Uh, give me one second. Yeah. Okay. So outside of that, I think there was one other last announcement that we had to make about, did you have a show? You got a show. I have going. a show today at, at, uh, yeah. 4 PM Saucecast. 4 PM. You got a show Saucecast. You got BizDoc. That's, uh, uh, you guys are talking about launching around In March or April, Come which, is, which is exciting. And then I know you got some crazy Val stuff that's Valuetainment going on. Valuetainment comedy. Please uh, subscribe, guys, because I have some fun. And we coming. also have Adam's birthday. Oh, Adam's get out. Birthday. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> that is wow. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. you. There you go. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Adam. Thanks, guys. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> The big 30, huh, Adam? 39. 39. 39 Still years old. 39 somehow, wow. guys. That's impressive. Looking good, that dude. That is impressive. That, that is, is awesome. Impressive. Happy that birthday, gorgeous. You know? As your mom I mean, would say, happy birthday. You never call. You never, you never call. call you never me. call me, Adam. Thank you, guys. So how's it feel, man? Tell us what's the difference, man. You know what? Turning 40 again for the third time feels... <laughs> <laughs> Feels great, guys. Feels great. You look Looking, great. You look fucking You know, look I'm fantastic. excited for the, the key word that you talked. A lot of responsibility in that second phase of your life. Looking forward to uh, that clarity, responsibility, and taking ownership for the next phase of my life. We have a guy, you know, like, we're debating whether we're going to live to 150. I've got a goal of 100. We're at 42, about to be 43 right now. I, I have a bet to win by 44, I hope. Knock on wood. We'll see. 
but uh, traveling this weekend for Jackson Hole, Wyoming, for the birthday. And Wyoming, sick, nice, and, uh, I'm sick. Excited nice. to excited to do this. But thank you, PBD. This is great. I'll make sure to chug the rest of this uh, brew it. champagne Brie. before the sauce cast. But what this is great. Podcast. Thank and you. And for all of you out there, all you young ladies that are 27 and a half years old, you're now eligible to maybe go to dinner a date with Adam. Thank you. And Tom, by the way, it's 21 plus to enter it's the, uh, the, <laughs> the the ride, but uh, yeah. thank you for the... Uh, so don't discriminate, Tom. Anyways, man, I think, uh, you know, the, the consensus is out. A lot of people are saying the Adam of two and a half years ago on the podcast or two years ago versus today, he's changing. You know, mm. big time. The phrase big is time. He, he's growing on me. I don't really know what that means. Maybe yeah. it's a, you know, uh, but, but uh, you know, it's a lot of... Uh, a lot of good things are happening. The future looks very bright. I for agree. I keep that on. I keep that on my wrist right here. Listen, outwork, out improve, out strategize, outlast. That that's what it is. I had fun today. This is awesome. Happy birthday, Thank you, great PBD. podcast. Join Saucecast today. Today, on. his show is going to be this afternoon. Take care, everybody. Uh, if we do it tomorrow, great. You'll see us. You won't see Adam because he's got to see the judge. <laughs> and he said he's not going to watch it yeah. till it's split, so he won't be on. But it'll we'll be see. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe or I do it tonight. If we don't do it tomorrow, we'll do it again next week. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you guys. Pat, suggestion. Bye.